Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Randall Thor 19, the man with the million. And uh, you're listening to the Xbox Two podcast. It is a wonderful Friday afternoon, May 19th. Lots and lots of interesting things to talk about. And I couldn't do this show without my right hand man, the one and only managing editor of Windows Central, the one and only person who was uh, nobody apologized to. The Mortal Kombat uh, YouTubers <laughs> didn't apologize to my guy, Jez. But he's here, no, Jez Corden. No, not. Jez Corden of Windows Central here in the flesh. What's going on, buddy? Hello, Rand. Yeah, man. I, I, was, I was expecting a wave of apologies from the Mortal Kombat content creator community. You know, some of them said I was lying about more, being called Mortal Kombat 1. They said I was lying about Peacemaker and uh, Homelander. You know, I've even had people making up fake tweets about Mortal Kombat leaks. <laughs> that is one passionate community. Never really had more Kombat information before, so I didn't really know what I was getting in for. But yeah, none of them apologized to me, man. After all, after all that, I, I'm, I can't, I, I'm not shocked. <laughs> I mean, I'm not shocked either. I'm shocked. Either. Yeah, probably, probably forgotten who I am. But anyway, yeah, the, do my victory lap. Mortal Kombat leaks were correct. Mm. My record is untainted. Untainted, as long as it's on Windows Central. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? I haven't got anything else wrong. What are you talking about? I don't know. You know, you never know. Fake news, bro. But anyway, how are you doing, buddy? Rand, are you are you are you ready for showcase season? Oh, bro, I'm, rumors I'm, coming I mean, in. Showcase season's beginning. We got PlayStation Showcase next week. Yes, we have we worldwide approvals for Xbox Activision Blizzard acquisition. Worldwide, yes. we're like what worldwide. thirty-seven countries now approving the deal. But will that one? Hold it up. How are you feeling now? Are you still on the... Because uh, you were at 5%. 5% chance. Lowly 5% chance the deal goes through. And then you sort of bumped it up to 7. How are you feeling now? You feeling a little bit better? Nah, it's still, still about a 7. You know? Still a 7. But mm, okay. the, there's some there's interesting things happening in the UK politically. Like the, the Chancellor... Like, I think the government's super embarrassed about this now. Because every basically every single regulator out there has approved the deal. The FTC is holding it up for for stupid reasons. And, you know, you've got the European Union that did their analysis and they approved it. China did its analysis as well and they approved it. So <clears throat> you basically got the UK by itself, ultimately. Um, exceptionalism, again, mm -hmm. making the government look stupid uh, because it's, it's kind of like it feeds into this narrative that Bobby Kotick basically started that the uk is a terrible place to do business after brexit you know and you know it's it's not it's beyond the abk deal we've got car manufacturers here this week talking about how terrible brexit is and how like the, the deal needs to be re renegotiated or factories are going to start being moved to europe you know so th there's a continuing narrative in the uk right now that the uk is an awful place for business so the chancellor of the the, the elected chancellor of the uk um mp jeremy hunt uh no no prizes for figuring out what his surname rhymes with but he um he came out today and was like the 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 cma needs to remember its responsibilities and stuff because it, it's sort of controversial because the cma in the uk is completely independent of the government regulators are supposed to be independent of the government because you know to to avoid the government interests manipulating the regulator but it seems very much like the U.S. interests have manipulated the regulator. So now we've got the regulator of the regulator, the CAT. They're going to look into the deal, and it's it's just a whole ass mess, bro. It's a whole ass mess. But um, but yeah, that's uh, all fun and games. But yeah, I don't think the UK. I mean, I ju I say seven percent, but I really deep down don't think the UK alone will be able to stop this yeah. train. Nobody stopping um, this train. The UK ain't stopping anything, right, Jez? That's how no, you're thinking. No, no, no. Well, I was thinking like if if the Europe if Europe said no, then it was gonna it that was gonna be it. You know, it was gonna be too expensive to try and push it through. But now Europe Europe and China said yes. They ain't they ain't gonna abandon this. They're gonna fight this to the last breath. They're gonna they're gonna bitch at the government and be like, you know, fix this, blah 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 blah. And I think. It, 
even if it comes down to something like um them just saying okay well we will keep the status quo in the uk just to satisfy our dumb regulator and get it through that way because you know there's a lot of there's a lot of mechanisms and a lot of options open to microsoft to get this through i think what's the most likely scenario is that uk consumers end up getting screwed mm. that's usually what happens in this country the uk gets screwed everyone else will be fine but uk will get screwed but yeah, we yeah we'll see. There's we'll still got a lot more to talk about. Starfield complete yeah. under pressure by the media to to be the second yeah. coming of Christ to solve yeah. uh, yeah, clear uh, to, you know solve people solve world hunger cure people of blindness and if it doesn't, well Xbox dies. It's it's do or don't. Either <laughs> it needs to deliver or Xbox is dead. Uh, and yeah, I did see this. A whole bunch this of other stuff. Too. Showcase season, PlayStation showcase, Xbox showcase. Mortal What's going to be shown? One, new yeah. games. It's going to be. It's going to be. Fresh a, releases. It's going to be a fun show. Got a lot of things to talk fun. about. Um, yes. But before we get into all that, we got some uh, housekeeping to uh, take care of. And as usual, the Xbox Two podcast is sponsored by. The one and only Manscaped. So, Jazz, take Manscaped. it away. Manscaped. That's right, Rand. This week's podcast is once again sponsored by Manscaped. Summer's coming, Rand. Are you ready to unveil your beach bod? No, no, I'm not. Well, Rand, maybe you should buy Manscaped. Manscaped trademark is here to ensure your body is ready for the wild with their game-changing full-body grooming and hygiene product range. Don't be the guy at the beach with Austin Powers chest hair. If <laughs> <laughs> and if you grew some winter man boobs, the least you can do is make sure they're shiny and smooth. <laughs> do you want shiny and smooth man boobs, Rat? I mean, who doesn't want shiny and smooth man boobs? <laughs> The least you can do. <laughs> oh, yeah, I already read that part. It's time to get ready for Hot Guy Summer by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with the code XP2. That's XP and the number two in the checkout. And thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Rand, did you grow some man boobs over the winter period? No comment. <laughs> But I mean, it's it's all it's all about hot guy summer, man. It's all about hot Xbox summer, hot PlayStation summer. Yeah, true. I mean, when I'm watching the Xbox showcase, I will be doing it with smooth balls. Let me tell you that. But much. will you be doing it <laughs> from the comfort of your own home or from the confines of LA among fans at FanFest? Yeah, uh, I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to wait and see about that rent. Could we'll Jazz be making? See. A trip to L.A. this year, perhaps? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We might have to wait and see. You, you never know what, what could happen in this crazy world. You know, we got a new CEO and, you know, strategies evolving. Who knows what might happen? We'll have right. to wait and see. Well, we also have the wonderful people at patreon.com uh, slash XB2. And uh, they get some of these shout-outs here. We got the greatest of Bip, Chris Parney, Starsman, Hey Blink and the Bearded Tate, Sleets, XZ, Army Dude 52C, Mr. Butterjeans, William Schumacher, Ryan Kipple, Foreign Object, Mythic Marty, Tyler, Gunstar 75, Moronic Donkey 99, C Money, Mario Kart Madman on YouTube, Makazilla, I Killed the Hollow Man, Randall Thor 19, Silas, Eric Gregory, Elijah Vasquez, James Moore, Halo is the franchise player, Katriox, Ricky Fallon, Bright Tundra 1, Jasper Shap, Joseph Campbell, Blastos, Mr. Joanna Dark, Justin Duell, Frank Mariano, PB Broking, Justin Miller, Ace of T and Madison, Untidy Grim, or Untidy Tim, Grizzly Mofo OG, Governor Grimm, DZ Huffin, Justin Sego, Andrew Courtney, Wagerman, Achievement, The Scarecrow 121, Darren Tropy, uh, Prof JJJ, Butterball 8, Ghostface Killer, Wolfgang KPZ, and Ralph Wiggum. And if you guys missed it, we just did Xbox 2 Ultimate on Tuesday. Uh, it's Patreon exclusive. You can check it out. Um, and we did an Xbox uh, Showcase Fantasy Draft. We did the fantasy draft. And that was a fun episode, man. It was a fun episode, and let me just say, my Xbox showcase entirely realistic compared to <laughs> Jez, and the, in the voting for the show, uh, mine won. My I had a better. Sh I put I put together a yeah, better like showcase 1%. than Jez. Uh, it was it was like two votes, but still, mine was the better. The, the the patrons who were there who were listening to it, 
they loved it. And they were like, Rand, you, you just put together a, a killer show. So <laughs> Are you saying Microsoft should hire you as their marketing? I mean, guy? they should be asking for, you know, some feedback. Because I could watch the show and tell them uh, much better than their mock reviewers for Redfall. <laughs> You know, the ones that were like, I don't know, maybe mid-70s. How? I bet you those mock reviewers never work for Microsoft or Bethesda ever again. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. We're under getting messy already, and we've only just started. I mean, I'm just saying, bro. I, could, I, I, know, I know what's good. I may not be an artist, but I know what looks good. You can show mm. it to me, and I could tell you how people are going to think, if it's acceptable or not. If I had played Redfall early, I would have been like, mm, I don't know about this guy. It's kind of got 60 <laughs> written all over it. Well, I don't know. Where yeah. Mark reviewers say it's just okay at 75 and you know, it's not that big of a deal. You know, if, you had, yeah. if I had played it, they would have known the truth. They would have been well prepared for uh, what was coming. Yeah, I guess. You can't well, say that, though. You know, yeah, you know well, what? I Anyways. Hindsight's 2020, bro. It is true. It is true. Uh, we still have Xbox Two uh, Plus One coming at the end of the month. Did you reach out to the person that we were thinking about having, or have you not done that yet? Because you nope. always forget to do that. <laughs> I forgot. Uh, Sorry, dude. It has been a week, man. I've uh-huh. like um, Windows Central is growing. We're expanding. Really? I've I've hired four people this week, so you know, I've been trying to get all that sorted out. So I haven't written that much, and I haven't been tw- Twitter that much either, because I've been so damn busy. But yeah, uh, Windows Central's growing, baby, at a time where lots of other media outlets seem to be struggling. Shrinking <laughs> or going ban- going bankrupt. Going bust, yeah. yeah. I wonder why. I wonder what we're doing that other sites aren't. Clickbait. I don't know. Could it... Clickbait. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe we need to do a bit more of that. But I don't know. It is what it is. Indeed. But, yeah. Um, well, let's, let's move on. We have a super chat here from the Don CG, Don CG, CJG together. We shall hold the line against the the clown man association. Have a good show, boys. This is my favorite time of the week. Man, I love, I love how King David's speech, hold the line has now become like, it's become like Xbox community myth and legend. <laughs> yeah, people are using it as a rallying call to hold the line. And, and you know, there, yeah. there are quite a few people that were upset. Upset? Yeah. Wow. A bunch of nobodies kind of being like, you know, uh, saying, oh, we shouldn't hold the line or whatever. It, it's like, it's all in fun and games. King's like a great character, right? Very, uh, you know, he, 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 he. He could be on stage. He could be an actor. He, he's got the charisma. Like, we had him on Xbox 2 Ultimate, and he's such he easy going to talk to. Like, you know you're going to get some golden from him, right? And, and the thing is, like, it, it, it carries. It, it has weight because uh, people look up to King. And just like a lot of the times you, you see, you'll say something on social media or we'll say something or somebody else will say something, and then suddenly – people who listen to you will start repeating. You'll see like exactly your argument that you may be repeated the same exact way from other, t- uh, other people will repeat it. And that's how, you know, you've sort of kind of crossed into uh, the world of, of being not inconsequential essentially. And ILP is loved. King David is loved more, you know, in the Xbox community by a lot of people. And that was kind of the pick up the rallying cry but then there are obviously people out there that are super jealous, super jealous of the visibility, super jealous of the exposure, super jealous of the fact that certain people within the community, uh, not because they're better, but because maybe their voices carry more weight than others, that uh, what he said kind of took a on a life of its own. And then they started side tweeting him without mentioning him about the holding line stuff. And it's like, the thing is, nobody cares about you. Nobody cares what you have to think about anything. The fact that then you have to try to cling on to somebody else's, um, you know, saying to get any sort of traction on social media says it all. You're worthless and you're inconsequential. You know, the, you know those type of people, Jez. The hanger on drama tubers. Yes, people who that that the whole shtick is making videos about other creators. It's not even really videos about other creators. Shit. It's more like just even just 
random people on Twitter who think their who think their opinions matter and who just shout it out into the ether and nobody cares, nobody likes their tweets, nobody retweets it, uh, their podcast yeah. nobody listens to, uh, <laughs> and they're jealous to see yeah, someone yeah. like King basically start a a, a movement. So it's not about like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to say something of my own. It's I'm going to attack this person and try to get clout that way. Those type of people. Yeah. So I guess they had drama tubers or whatever. What have you. I just noticed same, that. Same concept, I guess. But the, at least drama troopers make something. If you just that's tweet true. out, that's even lazier, but whatever. Yeah. Negative people going to negative, bro, and uh, they don't deserve That's what they do. much mind. But hold and... the line. <laughs> Okay. Hold the line. Uh, it, it reminds, it's it's from Mass Effect, isn't it? Hold the line. It's um. Oh, what's his name? I can't remember his name. That's Solarian. The Solarian oh dude, yeah, yeah. Morden. No, no, no. It wasn't Morden. It was the other guy. Oh, I can't remember his name. Someone in chat remember? It's um. It's the 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 head of the 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 um. It was Morden's replacement, and in, in charge of the the sort of special task group. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't remember his name. I can't remember his goes, name either. Hold the line. Yeah. <laughs> is that? That's, yeah, a, you that's, could, my, you that's, could, that's you, my Solarin impression. Yeah, I mean, bro. yeah. You Hold the line. Sing that song. Uh, you know the song that Morden sings in Mass Effect 2? <laughs> uh, mate, mate that, that, that'd be a podcast. I am the, thing, I I mean. am the perfect uh, something. Of the na, 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 you know, like. Uh, yeah. Kirahi. Captain Kirahi's name. Yeah, someone in chat said it. I knew that word. Our chat's very knowledgeable. Yes. But, um,. But yeah, the the Solarian song. Maybe I'll learn it and I'll sing it on the on the Patreon, not not publicly though. Yeah, <laughs> for, for the for the pay, Patreon people. <laughs> yeah, which was which was great because uh, the Patreon people on Tuesday we were like, oh, Mortal Kombat's going to reveal on on Thursday, and they kept that a secret. Yes, they did. Thank you, Patreon peeps. But yeah. Yes. Okay, rock and roll, baby. Uh, Have we K- got some more super chats? Chaos Might, member for 26 months, says, The man, the myth, the legend, Rand L. Jez Duo. What a week for Xbox. Expecting a good show. Yeah, I mean, last week Jez was a little bit tired, but he didn't He didn't sound tired today. He didn't come into the show basically saying like, Oh my God, it's been a week, bro. I'm so tired. Uh, yeah, I, so I, got I, the had energy. A, I had a good sleep last night. Yeah. The, la- last, last, last week I was like, I got up way too early and then worked really hard all day. But this week I've I, I got up late, so I got lots of energy. So yeah. yeah, I feel bad. I feel bad when I'm like, come on, tired because you know I don't I don't want to be tired, but I also don't want to skip a show. It's kind of like, what do you do? Do you have a tired show or do you skip a show? You know, well, doomed, damned. Can't, we can't way. skip shows. We can move a yeah. show, but we we can't skip. Uh, mm-hmm. Angry hippie says shiny and smooth moves. <laughs> yeah. That's the best super chat I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Web Dave, member for two months, says, Jez, try tuna and rice with Lee Parn's Worcestershire sauce to taste. <laughs> Enjoy, Rand. When will we get predictions for the showcase? Bro, Worc- can you say that again? Worcestershire? <laughs> what? Worcestershire. Worcestershire? Uh, 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 Worcestershire, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oh man, Do, have you ever had Worcestershire sauce? I don't believe I have. No, no, it's very what is good. It? It's very good. Uh, I don't know. I actually don't know what's in it, but it's very good. <laughs> I don't know what's in it. It's uh, it's from Worcestershire, I guess. But yeah, I don't know. You can get it in America because there was a whole South Park episode about it. Yeah, I um. As far as my predictions, I'll probably post them sometime beginning of June. You know, the showcase is on the 11th, so I'll probably do it in June. Uh, Try to think about, you know, things that, you know, might be there. As for, like, the podcast prediction episode, I mean, just looking at, um, you know, the well, how much time we have left here, we'll probably do the prediction episode on June 2nd. And, uh, yeah, which is like the two Fridays before. And I was thinking on the Thursday, the eighth, cause I don't think, cause you got a lot of things going on that week. Yeah. And I don't, th- I don't think we can do it. We can do a show on the ninth on Friday, the ninth. So we're probably going to do the show on June 8th, which would be the show right before the showcase that weekend. So we're probably mm. going to do an Xbox two on June 8th on a Thursday. And I was sort of thinking 
We should have a big episode. Bro, we should have like people. I, other... I, I, I don't know if I can do Thursday. We'll talk about this off the, off the air. But now you can't even do um, Thursday. What about Wednesday? What about the seventh? Uh, I don't know if I can do Wednesday. Bro, what is going on? Xbox Two. You mean you can't yeah. even have a show that week? Am I gonna have to do a show with a whole bunch of people? Instead? You're gonna have to do a show with a whole bunch of people instead. I think, bro. bro. You're gonna have to do a je- a jazzless Xbox Two with Cog Cult and all the peeps. I'm afraid, maybe. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah, I mean, well, well, yeah. Well, you're gonna have to give me a heads up because we were gonna do it on the eighth, but apparently now I guess we're not. But either way, there probably will be a show that week if Jazz can't do it. I'll just have to have guests on the show instead of you know an Xbox Two Plus One. It'll be a live show with a bunch of people. Uh, have yeah. a lot of fun. Uh, I think we we've done that like the last couple years, and those are always a good time. So, yeah. Um. Supernova in the in the chat says, "Until now, CMA didn't realize that Jimbo manipulates and made them super clowns in front of the world." Jez, what's about our lovely avowed? Oh, avowed, eh? I don't know. I don't know about avowed. It's um, it's it's interesting seeing people's predictions and expectations come out. A lot of people think avowed m- might be there because um of the graphic they've used, which is sort of like that got that sort of green shimmer to it. I will say that I haven't, I don't know personally if Avowed's going to be there or not, but I got pretty high hopes. I mean, I hope Avowed is there. I hope so too, but I, 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 I was, I was br- perusing the only thread that I like on reset Air on the Xbox thread. And, and they were, they were being like, which one of the elusive five are we going to see? And the elusive five being, I think what what were the what were the elusive five? It was Avowed, State of Decay. It was basically the games from twenty twenty. <laughs> they they're dubbed mm. like the elusive five: State of Decay, Everwild, uh, Avowed, Perfect Dark, and Fable. I believe were the five called dubbed the elusive five. And it was <laughs> how many of the elusive five will remain elusive after the show, and how many will actually be in, you know we'll, we we will see, and you know, just me thinking out loud and just kind of being like, well, maybe two of those, I think, possibly. Maybe two of mm. the five we might get information on or see a second time. Like, I know everybody thought Avowed was going to be there last year, right? I think we both were like, yeah, Avowed has to be there. But then nobody knew that Microsoft was going to pull this 180 and be like, no, 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 no. We're just going to we're gonna focus on things in the, last, in the next 12 months, right? And that kind of changed everything. Uh, and I remember, like, I think it was back in 2021, they were like, oh, you're going to see Avowed again really soon. But then there was a mix-up, and we actually got Outer Worlds 2 trailer, and they didn't show anything last year. So it's like 2023, you know. I mean, imagine if Avowed is, you know, a 2024 title, considering Xbox needs to kind of show off what their uh, their roadmap is. Uh, I would imagine Avowed would show up, but it's kind of hard to make definitive statements when Microsoft so casually can just change how things have always worked. Uh, so I mean, but yeah. I but I think you did say on the last was it on the last show where you said that um, you think that they got rid of the twelve months because you've heard of a game that's definitely further out than twelve months or something. But then maybe that's changed. Who knows? Yes, um, I. Uh... Yeah, I th- I think it's not the twelve months, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. It better not be the twelve months. I'll blame I'll blame ZX for that because he keeps on he keeps on posting for the twelve months. Like we should do that, and I'm just like you're crazy. You already ruined the whole ABK thing by saying zero concessions constantly every single day, and saying that it wouldn't get blocked, and then it gets blocked. Bro, what is that? Is that an X-Wing? Is there a Star Destroyer in your room? <laughs> what is going on? Like, that seriously. was a motorbike. That, that was, was a motorbike. That, what was it? Literally, was it was it riding in your house, like two feet away from you? <laughs> well, what, what was oh, that? Man. It was a motorbike. The was, window was open, right? Was that, I closed was, the window. Was that, was, that, was that loud for anybody else? Because it sounded like it was literally right next to you. What? I am really sorry. Yeah, I... Yeah, that was a motorbike. A spooky, spooky <laughs> motorbike. But it's we've closed it now. <laughs> oh my lord, all right. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, Chuck Norris brings the super chat with the lyrics, 
I am the very model of a scientist Solarian. I've studied species Turian, Azari, and Batarian. There you go. Oh, wow. That's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, when people say I can't sing on key, they know what I'm doing. <laughs> Man, you know what? I probably shouldn't have said it live during like, during this podcast because now people are going to clip my singing. You know, I should have got Cold Eastwood in here to <laughs> sing. Should have kept that as a uh, Xbox 2 Ultimate exclusive. That's nobody could hear my horrible singing. Uh, oh, you know, I think you think you're selling yourself short, bro. I think you're actually amazing at singing. I don't know about that. Nobody wants to hear. Maybe me sing. you are actually the best singer in the whole world. Mm, I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> Artemis wants to know, Jez, what is your percentage on the deal now after this week? Uh, mm, uh, mm. Oh, man. Well, put it this way, right? I don't think I don't think the CMA will budge. Right. Okay. I don't think the CMA will budge. I don't think that that will solve the CMA problem. I don't think Microsoft will figure out a way to make the CMA happy. But I think Microsoft will go ahead without the CMA somehow. So they'll get around the CMA either by just cutting off Game Pass benefits for the UK. They'll do something to screw over the UK, you know, because that that's what happens to that's what happens to Britain. Our our, our government and our and our sort of uh, our establishment, you want to call it, their their main goal in life is to screw over Brit British people. So, um, my expectation is that the deal will go through, it will be messy, and the UK gets screwed over. That is my current prediction. So I think it's still about a seven percent chance that it'll go through cleanly in the UK, and the reality is that the CMI will just keep blocking it, and they'll. You know, the cat tribunal, you know, I got no faith in that. And it'll just be a big mess. And then Microsoft will just be like, well, we got to pull the plug then in the UK. And then the government will be like, maybe the government then gets involved and he's like, well, please don't do that, you know. But I also think the government's got bigger fish to fry and they'll just let it all happen. It'll all go fly under the radar because the UK has got bigger problems to deal with right now. And uh, in the end, the regulator will screw over the public that's my prediction mm. <laughs> interesting yeah <clears throat> rip rip in peace rip in that's peace indeed yeah uh sean lawrence wants to know if we are doing a crossover with duke this year defining uh, duke should i want to do that i mean you want to do that of course i'm always down to talk to the dukes lord cognito and maddie I mean, that would be up to them, though. You know, if Maddie and Duke want us on or individually us on defining Duke, you know, they usually reach out. Um, you know, I, I mean, we've had Kong, Kong on for Xbox 2 plus 1. I need to get Maddie on at some point. Uh, I want to do that after the showcase, though. Yeah, you've always get... said you want you want Matty on after Starfield. Well, so well, we it's like I want some, yeah, yeah. Matty on to t after Starfield and after the showcase because we can have a lot of different things to talk about, like Starfield – uh, you know the roadmap that Xbox will put out, so we can we can have some really better conversations. Because right now it's just kind of sp everybody's sort of spinning their wheels, and that's why you end up yeah. with these articles like Starfield is Xbox's last chance at redemption, or else. <laughs> right. That's so. It's like nothing's really going on. You're kind of in this holding pattern, waiting for the marketing beats where all your clicks are going to come from because everybody's engaged with the PlayStation <clears throat> showcase and people want to see what's new from the Xbox thing. So, all right, what are we putting out there? Can we think? I got one. This is definitely the last chance for Xbox. <laughs> Even though they survived the Xbox One era with jack shit for years and years and years. Oh. This is it right here, baby. Starfield, the last chance at redemption. And if, it, oh, it, if Starfield dear. doesn't hit, uh, well, it's... They might as well just sell it. It's just completely over. It's done and dusted. Uh, shout out to Destin who wrote the article, uh, which, you know, there's, there's some things to say about it. I mean, I get it. Like everybody's entitled to feel a certain way. And I do agree. I agree with the sentiment of the article that like Starfield is important because it is probably more important after what happened with Redfall. I just kind of, I look at like, Last chance at redemption. I'm just like, mm, mm, mm. sounds a bit hyperbolic to me. 
But I understand we live in a world governed by <laughs> SEO and clickbait and people want to click on things and you got to get people in, in, enraged on one end or happy on the other or whatever so people can click and all that sort of stuff. But like, I don't disagree with the premise that it's an important game. Like, yes, it is. I, I've even said on the show that Starfield is like the most important new IP for Xbox since Gears. I think it has the chance to be bigger than Gears. I think it's, you know, we're, we're talking about Halo. But I don't know. I just, I just, well, we'll talk about that later. We'll, t- we'll talk about that later. I just, I just, I feel like we're in this zone right here where everybody's sort of spinning their tire- tires. They're kind of recycling content or coming up with new uh, ways to spin things because we're just waiting for the showcase. We're waiting to see what phase two is from PlayStation and we can talk about like their plans or we're waiting to see what Xbox's roadmap is for the next two years. And we can oh. write articles and about how we feel. We feel confident that Xbox is going to show off great things. Do we, do we like how Hellblade 2 looks? Uh, the gameplay improvements? Do we like how Avowed uh, plays and like the rumored reboot that you talked about? You and, um, you know, uh, Jason Schreier said it kind of went through um, uh, a little reboot a, a couple years ago. So be like, oh, do you like how it looks? Do, you, do What about 2024 release date? What about these smaller games? And then it's like, oh, well, Fable didn't show up again. What does that mean? Is Fable in trouble? Perfect Dark wasn't there. Is Crystal Dynamics having a problem? Is the initiative not the answer? Like, it's sort of, we're waiting for all these questions to have answers. And yeah. for the media types to start kind of setting the next narratives for the platforms. And the narrative right now is that, rightly or wrongly, Xbox doesn't know how to make great games or right because that that's basically kind of been the fallout from redfall the fallout yeah. from releasing a critically panned game from a studio that has uh game of the year contenders in, in their in their past like the first game under uh Bethesda right that Microsoft's new mega publisher that they've been marketing for 2 years and it comes out with a wet fart right stinks up the joint doesn't last long. Cause it's already fallen off the most, most played list. Like it's basically non-existent on steam and already like outside the top 30 on Xbox. So probably won't have a lot of legs, but because of that visceral reaction of waiting all that time for something new, uh, now it's like, well, is Starfield going to be shit? Cause that's kind of like, that's kind of like what what it is now. It's like, well, God, is Starfield going to be shit? And if Starfield, this kind of all if it goes back to what I what I've always said, Jez, with Redfall and Starfield, if those games were good, Xbox will get zero credit, and really they shouldn't get any credit. Uh, like even with Hi-Fi Rush, those games were in development long before Xbox acquired them, right? But I did say, mm-hmm. if those games were bad like Redfall was, that Xbox would get all the blame. Yeah. And they've certainly shouldered all the blame because Phil went out there in an interview and basically took all the blame on himself, like a leader really should, right? Even despite the fact you can have different opinions about whether or not the game should have launched the state it launched in or what have you, Phil took the blame on himself and been like, we can't do this. Uh, But it's playing out exactly... Uh, exactly like how I thought it would. Like, if they're bad, they'll get all the blame. And if Starfield's great, if Starfield is the 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 huge hit that everybody's been hoping for, then nobody's going to give any credit to Xbox. They'll just be like, oh yeah, it's Bethesda, it's Todd Howard. Of course they were going to put out something great. Xbox had nothing to do with it. The game was been in development for a long time. So then the, you know... It'll be pushed further. It'll be it'll be Forza Motorsport. But then people will say, well, that doesn't matter because it's Forza. And and Forza games are always consistently good. So that doesn't matter. And then it'll push to Hellblade. But then people will say, well, is Hellblade good? And if it's bad, they'll say, well, that proves that Matt Booty and Xbox Game Studios doesn't know what they're doing. Because Hellblade 1 was already good. 
But if it's actually good, they'll say, well, Xbox doesn't have anything to do with it because it was just a, an IP they acquired. Of course it's going to be good. Right? So, like, you're going to have to really go to 2024 to get something like Avowed or one of these other titles before it's, like, truly, you know, what is Microsoft involved in versus what did they acquire and how much say do they have in things? Like, I already see all the narratives basically in front of me for the next year, depending on how the titles uh, perform, right? But that's just yes. me rambling. That's just me rambling. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I thought I thought there was going to be more. Nah, I um, I agree with you. I, you know, I don't think you can necessarily give Xbox all the credit for Starfield. But I will say that, I mean, there's probably a chance that Xbox is probably more willing to delay Red, um, not Redfall, uh, Starfield, than Bethesda would have been. You know, because you know. Microsoft, I think, can <clears throat> shoulder a delay for a massive game, maybe a little bit better than Bethesda on its own at this point would have been. Because you have to remember, if Bethesda was still single, single, they're not married. <laughs> um, if, well, if no, no. St- I mean, Xbox put a ring on that, but then they just kind yeah. of let them off to do whatever, and they yeah. came back with they brought home <clears throat> a puppy that shits and pisses all over the carpet. And they're like, <laughs> uh, we should have gotten involved in potty train this puppy before. Yeah. I guess. I mean, Bethesda, Bethesda was kind of like spinning its wheels in the mud a little bit, trying to figure out its identity in the the service game world. I mean, Fallout 76 is doing all right now, and Elder Scrolls Online is doing all right now, but neither of these games reviewed well at launch. And um, they kind of don't have their service cash cow like Epic Games does or like Microsoft does with Minecraft, like Activision does with everything. You know, so Bethesda were, and, you know, even like... Um, you know, take two, they've got growth of thought online and, you know, stuff like that. So every, all these big triple I publishers, they all have like their cash codes that they milk, like Apex legends or whatever, but Bethesda never really had one. So they were kind of like crap. We've inve- <laughs> we're, we're a dev of single player games and we don't really have one. So they were probably like, yeah, okay, we'll do fallout 76 on an engine, not designed for multiplayer. We'll make, you know, elder scrolls online. Uh, you know, it's, it's not not particularly great, um, but you know um, it's it's all right now after like a million expansions. But at launch, it was pretty terrible when you compare it to what was out there, um, you know. And uh, without Microsoft, they probably would have been like, "Man, we need to release Starfield as soon as possible so we can get some revenue." But with Microsoft, I don't think revenue is the goal anymore. You know, and it's important, sure, but it's like it's more about Game Pass. And it should be more about Game Pass, and it should be about growing the Xbox brand because those games are exclusive. I think that's where the disconnect is ultimately. Is that like for Xbox, these games mean um, it impacts the brand of Xbox, you know? And like uh, it comes back to what we discussed in a previous show where it's like, what is what is the goal now for these games? Under Bethesda, it would have been revenue, but now it's part of Xbox. It's like the goals are different, right? But I suppose just for the devs, that all they should need to focus on is making a good game. And that's what Phil always kind of professes in interviews is that we just want them to make good games and we don't want to, we don't want them to have to worry about the rest of it. But, you know, well, in that case, Xbox should be doing a better job of positioning some of this stuff. But I don't know. It's a big philosophical debate about what Xbox's role is when it's some of its studios are, you know, you could consider them to be satellite, right? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's a big discussion. We have a super chat here from Atticus. He says, Jez, I'm a first time Diablo player and the betas had me hooked. Took two days Gosh. off work for a four day weekend to grind. Lol. Don't judge me. I think I did see <laughs> you guys say that, uh, you, or at least you've been seeing a lot of trends, uh, basically that point to Diablo four being the first Diablo game for a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, when did Diablo 3 come out? Like, it was over 10 years ago. 2014, I think, I want to say, maybe. Nine years ago, then? No, right. it could have been 2013. No, I think no. it was, or no, was it, the th- was it the 360 gen? Was it the end of the 360 yeah, it gen? Yeah, it came out on 360 originally, yeah. Um, it launched on PC, and then I think it came to Xbox 360 afterwards. Well, I want to I, know- I can't even remember when it launched. It was a long-ass time ago. I want to say um, I played it on Xbox One. 
Uh, okay, so initial release date I was May, it. May 15th, 2012. And I want to yeah, say damn. I played it on Xbox One. Um, but yeah, it looks like it was... A, oh no, I played it on the 360. I didn't play the Xbox One version. I think... Didn't they give three, three upgrades or something? I don't know. Maybe they didn't. But anyway, yeah, it was a lot. It came out a long ass time ago, and I think like Diablo three, like Diablo. I always call it Diablo. I don't know why, but Diablo three. Um, it it maintained like a strong fan base over the years, but I don't think it it revolved around its existing players. It didn't really get new players very much. So like the seasons were very sort of oriented around existing players and and giving people more you know new stuff to do and reasons to make new characters but they never really went outside the the, the diablo bubble you know so i think this will be the first diablo for a lot of people you know especially after like maybe they tried diablo mortal and they were like man this is you know casino hellscape so it's you know a lot of people like those kind of games apparently because the game's making money hand over fist but for those of those people who played diablo mortal and were like this is really good but i don't want the pay to win stuff um that's basically what diablo 4 offers right so yeah i think uh, yeah a lot of it's going to be you know the first diablo for a lot of people and um i've got high hopes for it man i have to tell you very high hopes i'm looking forward to it uh sebastian cooper says just remember pony bots xbox is king hold the line what the hell is a pony bot a pony bot mm. a pony bot is um I don't know. Someone who is a fan, toxic fanboy of both sides. Mm, I don't know. I've never, I've never. <laughs> maybe, heard maybe, before. maybe they're, maybe they're a fanboy of Xbox and PlayStation, and they hate Nintendo. <laughs> who would that be? Oh, that'd be you. You're a pony bot because you play on PlayStation and you play on Xbox, but you hate Nintendo. Excuse me. Yeah, you're a pony bot, bro. <laughs> you you play on PlayStation, you play on Xbox, and you hate you mean, Nintendo. You are a pony bot. You mean like I turn on my PlayStation twice a year, and I play like every other day on Xbox. I'm I'm a I'm a pony bot because of that. That's what that means. Yeah, because you mm. you hate Switch, bro. You I don't Switch, I don't bro. I don't think that's what that means. I think that's what it means. I just made it up. All right, I, I guess deal with it, bro. All right, uh, shout out to <laughs> Ralph Wiggum, become the newest member of the channel. Appreciate it, Me Puppet 007 uh, do you think Xbox will actually release their roadmap? Because so far it appears they're just stumbling a- along. It, well, I mean, that's a that's an interesting way to put it. I mean, you look at what this showcase is going to be, right? And you know that Redfall's not going to be talked about at all. They, I don't, I don't even know if Xbox socials have really even talked about Redfall since the whole. Uh, since its release. So Redfall is not going to be at the show. It's not like Sea of Thieves where like there's a chance Sea of Thieves shows up yet again because of the last... Sea of Thieves, I was I literally looked at yesterday to see how many games Xbox showed in 2022 and 2021. And it was like 32 last year and like 30 the year before. So it was basically in between 30 and 32 games. And the one constant was... Two constants were... Three constants actually. Four constants now, now I'm thinking about it. Was Fallout seventy six and That's and, a lot of and Elder Scrolls Online were at both. Grounded was at both, and I think even Grounded was at the twenty twenty show, if I'm not mistaken. And mm. Sea of Thieves was at both. So Sea of Thieves could show up again. Grounded maybe could show up again. Uh, you know, I, I don't know about Fallout seventy six and yeah, Elder you Scrolls. have to accept the fact that these games have a lot of fans and they deserve to have their their thing too like i'm not like i'm not someone who really cares to to learn personally about sea of thieves because i don't play it but um these games are huge you know and you can't complain if they're on they're on stage at xbox yeah i mean halo wasn't there but i guess what i'm trying to say is starfield has its own thing redfall's not going to be there minecraft legends is going to be out already the only game that we know of is Forza Motorsport. It'll be there, probably get a release date in October. And then that's it. That's all you know for Xbox. Very similar situation to PlayStation currently, right now, where all you know is they have Spider Man 2 releasing this fall, supposedly in September. You have a Wolverine game that's either 2024 at the earliest, probably 2025. 
So a lot of people are looking forward to the PlayStation Showcase because you have the situation where Sony has a lot to show and you want to see their roadmap because you want to know what's going to come in 2024, maybe what's even coming in 2025. And Xbox is very similar. The difference is with Xbox, they've revealed a whole bunch of games in the past years that you're still waiting to hear more information about, like the Elusive Five, right? So you're looking at it like, all right, well, they're going to have to talk about games that are coming next year because when else would they do it? If not for this show to tell you, hey, Hellblade 2 looks good and it's coming this time. Here's another Here's another look at Avowed. I know it's been three years, but Avowed is getting ready. It's coming next year, right? Here's some, you know, uh, Project Belfry or one of the other Project game, Games that Jez leaked that he probably never should, should have leaked because they're all way too early, right? Uh, yeah, well, you should have stopped me, bro. I, I tried stopping you every single time you try to you try to leak an Xbox game. I always you tell you tried not harder. to do it. Like compulsions game, like <laughs> they're going to have to sh- at least show you uh, 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 the uh. games that are coming next year because nobody knows after Forza Motorsport when anything's coming. And then it's like, well, if they're going to also look at, hey, did the 12-month showcase do anything for us? No, it didn't. It actually created expectations we couldn't live up to. Uh, we we're going to ditch that. And then maybe they show some things that are further off, like Fable, for example. I know people want to see Fable. I mean, even if that game is supposed to launch in 2025, I mean, why couldn't you show something this year, even if it is, even if it is two years out? You know? So I'm just saying, like, both PlayStation and Xbox are in a similar way where you don't know what else is coming and they're both going to have to tell you like, hey, this is what 2024 looks like. At the very minimum, they're going to have to show you what next year looks like. And then maybe some give, they give you some peeks into further, you know, further down the, down the road. Which is why that's, it's all incredibly exciting because it's all new shit, right? They, Xbox can't rely on Starfield and, and Redfall again you know, so it's like the games that they're going to show, granted, might be stuff you've seen before, but it's basically going to be a brand new look at it. So both these showcases are super exciting to me simply based on those facts because they have to show you new stuff. First looks at new games and, you know, uh, maybe gameplay looks finally for the first time with release dates on stuff. You know, I don't know. That's the way, yeah, that's, uh, that's the way I'm right. looking at it. I'm expecting a lot of new stuff at the show mm-hmm. and yeah some of it unfortunately leaked thanks to some asshole leaker who um, what leaked i don't know I don't oh know. you're talking about you're talking about uh the wandering who the wandering who and the what now uh, but you know the, all the, all the, those the oh the persona uh, yeah. the persona 3 remake leak that happened on reset era there was a big threat on reset era that persona 3 uh remake might be oh, at the yeah. xbox show yes yeah um, well I, I, I just mean, like, it, it would have been new stuff if, like, that massive, when me and Jeff Grubb were just... Oh, yeah, com- when you guys were talking about games that are... Oh, Project Dragon <laughs> and Project Sha- Shaolin and Project uh, Project Booty Kisser, you know? Project Booty Kiss? I mean, isn't that one of the games you leaked? Project Booty Kisser? Uh, yeah, maybe it is. I don't know. Project Booty Kisser. I don't know. What are, what, what are, the, like what, what game, are, what are the code names for the new Xbox consoles? Ah, I, I almost say. got you. I almost got you. <laughs> you almost... <laughs> I was really confused there. Why did you ask that? I don't know. Yeah, I, don't... I-, I thought maybe you, yeah. you might have had them and we could have we had a podcast that was one for the ages where VGC I'm, and I'm, well, IGN and I'm like, be... Jess Corden leaks projects, uh, whatever it would be for, you know, the new consoles. What were you going to say then? I was I, for whatever in my mind I'd like was say Project Spartacus, but I, I, I Spartacus. I, yeah, I don't know. Why I, Spartacus? I don't know. It was just I it was just say Spartan. It was like a it was like a it was just a word that popped into my head. But I was kind of thinking like, wasn't Spartacus one of the PlayStation code names? But no, that was like Neo and Trinity and stuff from like the PS4. I believe it was like PS4 Pro. I think, no, I think Spartacus was a PlayStation. Was code it? A, name. Was it a PlayStation thing? Huh. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Um, Xbox, I thought you were going to say Spartan because that was the code name for Microsoft Edge. <laughs> Project Spartan? Mm. Yeah, Project Spartan. I suppose because it was going to have Cortana in it, maybe, and then Cortana died. 
Yeah. Rip. Well, if you guys are enjoying the show, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, please share this out. Let everybody know we're live and subscribe if you haven't. We hit 94,000. Only 6,000 more to go. Maybe we get to 100K this year. Maybe yeah, there'll be a podcast in the future where Xbox Two's on camera. I I don't know. It's a possibility when we get to 100K. So yeah, I've been, I've been losing weight, bro. Back yeah. on the weight loss train. That's good. Lost, That's good. Uh, lost 16 pounds in two weeks. There you go. About that. What are you eating? Just mayonnaise? Uh, I'm eating pretty much just cottage cheese. Mm. That's it. Cottage cheese and vitamins. Pretty much what I'm eating. And fruit. But yeah, I'm back on that train. I've been you know trying to. Get a bit healthy, you know, before I have to do a load of traveling in June or something. Where are you going in June, bro? I don't know, bro. I don't know. You going places? Is that is that why we can't really do a show that one week? Because you might be going places? Mm, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe, bro. Mm. Maybe. I'll see, bro. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, Laburn 98 says, The goalposts have shifted. Xbox can't make great games. Now it's Xbox can't make great AAA games. Next, Xbox can't make AAA games with a story. I see LeBum or LeBurn says he already knows the narratives. Well, it's, 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 I was thinking about this today because like, you know, the narrative was Xbox had no JRPGs, right? Japan doesn't support Xbox, right? And yeah, the Japan, you know, still a problem, but it's, it's a lot, a lot of it is basically contained to Square Enix. You know, they've, they cracked Atlas. People asked for Atlas, Phil delivered, and we've got Yakuza. We've even got a uh, Suikoden, probably pronounced that wrong. Konami seems to be supporting Xbox, you know. So, you know, Fuga Melodies of Steel just came out. Cyber Connect, a very good game as well. So, the narratives have to shift away from the Japanese stuff as well. Um, you know, we've even got a Kojima bringing out a game. Yeah. And the Persona games are on Xbox, which I never thought yeah, would ever happen. Uh, I, I mean, I was just going to say, I never, Street I never Fire thought. Back. Street Fighter's back on the platform, right? Yeah. yeah. But we then, even got, um, oh, uh, man, what's it called now? That other fighting game, Blaze, is it Blaze Blue, Battle Tag or something? Yeah. But Xbox is... Guilty Gear. Guilty but they might Gear. be losing the Konami games, bro. Silent Hill 2, timed exclusive. Maybe Metal Gear Solid 3 remake. Mm-hmm. And Castlevania. You know, I mean, I'm saying, according to the rumors, at least. Well, I, I've heard now that I've heard now that Metal Gear Solid 3 isn't exclusive to PlayStation. Oh, so now... I mean, we talked about it last week, but you weren't really too sure. You said it was going to come to Xbox, but you weren't sure about timed exclusivity or whatever. Now you're just saying that you think it's just, what, a marketing deal they have, maybe? I know it's in development for Xbox, I think. Well, I'm I'm fairly sure it's in development for Xbox. I don't know if it's like a marketing deal, time DLC or something like that. But I'm pretty sure Metal Gear is coming to Xbox, but I'm not 100% sure yet. So take that with a pinch of salt if they do come out and they're like, oh yeah, it's it's exclusive. Well, we'll maybe, find out. Maybe I guess the we'll... rumors I've got are just, I just, uh, just, I don't know what you Did call it. Did you just it. jinx it? Yeah, maybe, maybe the rumors are just obfuscation. You know. Hey, is that? I think that's the next name of the Metal Gear game. It's Metal Gear Solid Three Obfuscation. Obs- Obs- you know how they always have those weird, weird names like yeah, uh, like that. subsistence. Yep, and revengeance. Revengeance, is, and this one's called Metal sure Gear. Small, right? Metal Gear Solid Three Obfuscation. Obfuscation, yeah. I mean, I guess we'll maybe find out on Wednesday. That's the big rumor: Metal Gear Solid Three remake at the show, maybe or maybe yeah. not exclusive. Although Jez Corden says. Don't believe the hype, maybe, possibly. It might be coming to Xbox 2. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I honestly don't know for sure. But I pretty I'm I don't I'm in the I'm in the camp that it's not exclusive now. Okay. Put it that way. Fair enough. I like that camp. I would re- I mean I'd play it regardless if, if it was exclusive to PlayStation, if I had to, but like I'd much rather want to play it on the superior system with the superior controller and the superior achievement system. Um <laughs> That's where I would choose to play it anyways. Uh, oh, Bigity, yeah. I thought you didn't care about achievements anymore. Well, no, but I mean, like, I like to... It, I mean, I, 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 sound I, I don't in the way where I'm going to play those stupid-ass five-minute thousand points that are updated to 5,000 simply to keep up and up, up, up your score. But, like, I like seeing, like, my digital journey, essentially. Like, these are all the things I've played from... 
you know, 2023 to 2005, because it's a history of what you've essentially done. Like all the games that you played, the achievements that you've gotten, it's like a digital footprint. That's uh, true. Right. And, and that's why I play everything, you know, third part. I play everything on Xbox. I only really turn on my PlayStation when there's uh, an exclusive. Like I, this past, uh, last year, I played God of War Ragnarok and I played. God, was it just, I just played God of War Ragnarok and I played Stray and Sifu. And Sifu, when it came over to Xbox, I played it again because I loved it that much. And there is uh, this this rumor about Sifu, uh, Stray uh, being rated for the ESRB, but they took it down uh, coming to Xbox. One year exclusive, probably coming in July. I'll probably play that again. I did enjoy it enough and it is short enough where it's like, okay, I'll play it. But I like to just, that's what I like to do. And I only have my PlayStation to play the exclusives. If the exclusives are the ones I want to play, like I'm not interested in Gran Turismo Seven. I probably won't be interested in Twisted Metal. Uh, you know, I haven't even played the Two Horizon games because I just don't care. M- maybe I will play them at some point, but you know, will I play Spider Man Two? Yeah, I really like the last two Spider Man games. Like to see what they're gonna do with this one. Last of Us factions. Oh, that's you interesting. Know? What, what if? What if? What if, Rand? What, what if, if Spider-Man 2 launched in the same window as Starfield? Which one would you be playing first? Just hypothetically speaking. Hypothetically. Well, assuming... So, like, say it was the same week. Star, so, what's Starfield's release date? September 6th, I think, right? I think yeah. September 6th. Let's, so, let's say Spider-Man 2 launches September 9th. Like, that same week. And assuming I don't get a review code for Starfield, which I probably won't because I didn't get one for Redfall. Um, I don't think Bethesda knows who I am. Fair enough. Um, The thing is, is I know Spider-Man, to me, as well as most PlayStation games, and some people will take this as a derogatory way, but their games are one and dones for me. In, f- in fact, most games, most games, 99% of games are one and dones for me. I, p- I finish it and then I never play that. it again. I delete it. And I know Spider-Man will actually, Can't I'll probably play Spider-Man game. less time. So to me, I'd probably be like, I'll do Spider-Man first because once I'm done, I'm done. And then yeah. Starfield can kind of be... There's a lot of a lot of exploration you can sort of do in Starfield, and I assume it would be a longer game. Uh, that would be my reasoning, mostly because it'll be a shorter experience, and once it's finished, it's finished. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. It would be very interesting, because not only do you have that, you have Mortal Kombat losing in September now as well, September 19th. Yeah. Um, it would it definitely be crazy if Spider-Man crazy. was launching in September, wouldn't it, Ryan? Well, there was already a leak from Tony Todd, who plays Venom, that pretty much said it was coming in September with, like, commercials. Oh, really? Yeah, with, we talked about this before. In fact, it was part of the title for the episode was Starfield versus Spider-Man 2. This was maybe oh, a month ago. But, yeah, Tony Todd was like... Oh yeah, Spider-Man 2 is coming in September. They're going to have uh, commercials and stuff in August, and which kind of points to an early September release. And I think Spider-Man 2018 came out like September 8th or 7th, which would have been like first week. So yeah, there's a chance Starfield and Spider-Man 2 come out the same week. You know? Um, okay. I thought I was leaking something then. Oh, well, what, what, what are you leaking some? Spider-Man's coming in September? Is this a leak? You did say. Yeah. You did say on Twitter. <laughs> I did say on Twitter that uh, more that uh, you knew more about the PlayStation showcase than the Xbox showcase. Uh, yeah, that's not true anymore. That's not true anymore. <laughs> so, do you know yeah, more about the Xbox showcase now than the PlayStation showcase? Yes. Okay. Anything you want to share? I did see the no. one and only Grubster, our buddy mm. Jeffy Grub Grub, come out and say that there is going to be no Ghost of Shima 2 as well as uh no no Dragon Age new Dragon Age game at PlayStation show I guess um hmm. you know do you, would would you like to share anything outside of Spider-Man 2 coming in September I guess uh, nah, nah 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 I'm try I'm trying to be good I'm not, I don't want to spoil surprises I'll let Jeff Grubb take all the heat you know like Grubb take the heat <laughs> well I mean like yeah, okay. Fair enough. You want to let the grub take the heat. And usually I'm the good shoulder on your 
good angel on your shoulder saying don't leak good stuff. shoulder on my angel shut up whatever you know what i meant good shoulder on my angel. yeah yeah i don't know I, I, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know that much about PlayStation. I know a couple of things, but I do know more than a couple of things about the Xbox show. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna leak anything about either because I, you know, it's it's fun to be surprised. I think you, you know, know, and these shows are a chance to get surprised. You know, and yeah. So let's let's just wait a bit. You know, I know. Right. I don't actually know that much about it, so a lot of it's going to be a surprise to me, too. There's probably people from Xbox listening to the show right now, or be listening to this later. Hi. Um, how you doing? Hope you're well. Uh, that are probably listening to this and being like, how does this m f -er know what's in the showcase? Because that's supposed <laughs> to be secret. You know? Yeah, well... You're not supposed to know I these things. To. And if you know these things, other people might know these things. How long until Tom Henderson leaks this on Insider Gaming? And has the whole Xbox show up in a post uh, on Insider. In, is, it's Insider Gaming, right? Not Inside Gaming, Insider Gaming. Insider Gaming. Insider Gaming. Yeah. As just like, here's the 30 games that are uh, be at the Xbox show, just like he did with some other showcases. How long before Tom Henderson just posts a list of stuff at Xbox's show? Well, put it this way. If I've... Some of the stuff that I've heard, if 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 I've heard it, I'm pretty sure the people have heard it, and it probably will be out there sooner rather than later. But uh -oh. I don't want to be the one. I don't want to be the one to do it. Uh oh, it's gonna be out there sooner rather than later, huh? We do have a couple weeks to go. You might want to mute some things on Twitter. You know. Yeah. If you if you if you don't want to get spoiled, like I don't know, you can mute hashtag mute mute words and stuff like showcase, I guess. But yeah. Um. I'm not going to spoil the showcase. That's I want to be surprised too, to be honest. I, I was thinking about like how when Killer Instinct was announced, that was such a shock to me. And it was so nice. It was so pleasant. I want to feel emotions, Rand. I want to feel emotions. So, And yeah, yeah you want, you want uh, feelings-based jazz. I want, I want feelings-based jazz. I want to have fun. I want to, I want to feel emotions. Yeah, maybe I'm getting old. Maybe I'm getting old and soft, man. I don't know. All right. Uh, Biggity08 says, People keep saying live service games were, were bad at the beginning, but are good now. Will people ever wait two to three years for them to improve? It's a tough ask to ask people to wait. Maybe that worked when there wasn't a lot of live service games, like back in the times of Rainbow Six Siege, which launched bad. When there wasn't a lot of competition, but like the whole space is completely saturated now. So if you don't come out and make a splash with a good first impression, more than likely your game's just gonna get lost in the ether and you'll be completely Die. you'll be dead. Like uh they just uh that vampire that vampire battle royale game that came out last year on PlayStation and PC. They're already they're basically announced this right. this, this week. That came out. Yeah, Vampire Masquerades or something like that. It was a battle royale right. game. That came out delayed. for whatever reason. It was a PlayStation Five exclusive and on PC, and yeah, they already um, a year later they're like we're stopping development on the game. So it's another another one to the grave <laughs> of of like of service live service game stuff. grave. Yeah. I didn't even know that came out. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you okay. you wouldn't because it was a PlayStation Five game. But I'm just saying, like, th things have changed. You need to you need to unless you're tied to a big IP like Halo Infinite, where you immediately get eyes on you. But even still, you need to actually have good post-launch content, which Halo didn't. Uh, but, uh, you know, you just... you there, There's so many games now, you need to stand out in some some manner. And mm. uh, uh, But a lot of the AAA games these days seem to launch lacking content or uh, launch in a horrible performance state, right? True. Uh, and I was, I've been playing one of those recently. Uh, Sebastian Cooper says, I don't understand why no one is talking about this, but it's leaked now that its software is helping Bethesda with gunplay for Starfield fact. Well, because mm. um, that's really not, I mean, that's to be expected. Like, it the thing helped. is, I, I hate to tell you guys this, but they, they, were, they worked on Fallout 4, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not unheard of that it does this. Um, so it... They they literally said id contributed to Fallout 4's gunplay, which is why Fallout 4's gunplay is like 
orders of magnitude better than Fallout 3 and orders of magnitude better than Fallout New Vegas. And Fallout New Vegas was like way better than Fallout 3 for gunplay. Like Obsidian added some like... Uh, did they add iron sights aiming for some weapons in Fallout New Vegas? They did something to the gunplay. I can't remember exactly what it was. It's been so damn long. But, um, but yeah, so it's not unheard of that they do this. And thank God they are, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, God Emperor Shulfa King. Uh, Shulfa King, newest member of the channel. Appreciate you. Enjoy the, the emotes and stuff. Uh, Locante says, anyone think we're seeing the Coalition at E3? I know Jez would love to see that. I would love to see the Coalition. I've actually heard some very, very good things about Ooh. the Coalition recently. Oh, really? Um, not, not as pertains to the showcase, but what they're working on. You know, I've heard some very good things. So I'm... Um, I still think the Coalition's Microsoft's best dev, you know. I mean, they're up and there for sure. Who's better? Who's better than the Coalition? Um, well, I mean, Bethesda. I had Arcane up there. <laughs> I might, have, I might have to distinguish <laughs> between, I might have to distinguish between Arcane Leon and Arcane Austin. But I mean, I had Arcane up there. I had ID Software up there. Um, I, you know depending on fable i think playgrounds up there like if they can nail fable i think that puts them higher than the coalition well right? yeah i so i suppose officially speaking playground is probably their best dev in terms of raw raw quality and consistent quality it probably is playground but um you know for me it's a coalition and i think i've just heard some really exciting things about them lately. do you think we see gear six or something gears related at the show perhaps maybe a collection of games uh maybe i, I honestly haven't heard any information about whether the coalition will be there or not but um you know I, <laughs> it's very funny right because i said like there was no there was no gears gears collection right and um when nick was talking about that i think it was two years ago and um at the time there definitely wasn't but now I'm not so sure. And if you are the coalition and sort of like you've spent a long time not really releasing anything and you know there's there's no there's no real microtransaction nobody's spending microtransactions in Gears 5 at this point. So, you know, if you want to sort of get a bit of revenue to cash flow the business a little bit, offset risk or whatever, Gears collection at this point makes a lot of sense. Um you know, especially given the fact that they've got like new engine to work with and new tools and it could be a good project for practicing with those tools. So I think it makes a lot of sense now, um, but it definitely didn't used to exist. Sorry, Nick. Uh, are you <laughs> going to apologize Nick to Nick? About that forever. But yeah, uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if it exists or not. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's possible. You know, I would imagine if a Gears collection exists, You'd want to put that out before Gear Six, yeah. You like, and if Gear That's Six fun, is twenty twenty five, then you know maybe a good release would be uh twenty twenty four to get here's the three Gears games, here's some multiplayer, get people back into the game, and boom, Gear Six is the year after or two years after or whatever. I mean, they very similar to how they did Gears Ultimate, and then a year later it was Gears Four. I'm pretty sure that's how that worked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that could do something like that. I think it could could make some decent money, and you know if they bring all the multiplayer stuff together, and you know, and maybe don't be so don't be greedy with it. Don't put tons of microtransactions in it. Could also win back some goodwill, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, Biggity08, member for two months. Hit that like button, folks. Indeed, if you're enjoying the show, make sure you hit the like button, please, and subscribe. If you're new, it's, it's all greatly appreciated. Um, some people are saying Scalebound in chat, and Spartacus was the PlayStation Plus code <laughs> name. I knew Spartacus was something PlayStation yeah, related. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's Spartacus. And I was like, wait a minute, oh, that's PlayStation something. Uh, Jacob yeah. says I've lost faith in PlayStation almost completely. Okay, well, hopefully, why? The, I don't know. I mean, Jake, he says he's lost faith in it. Uh, hmm. maybe the showcase will give you that faith back. DB Cooper. Obsidian says, am I a joke to you? Yeah, what about Obsidian, Jez? Yeah, Obsidian is pretty good, you know, but I really I really want to see them step up to that next level. I like, you know, I love I love pillars, but at the end of the day, it's like, you know, it's a Unity game. 
Yeah, it doesn't have any. It doesn't have super amazing graphics like what the Coalition's capable of. Obsidian's a really great. Um, Grounded's really amazing, but again, it's it's you know it's it's side project. Pillars is also a side project. I really want to see them step up, and I think they will. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what Avowed and The Outer Worlds Two looks like. Someone in chat goes. Uh, Ever since Jez has had more responsibility and been sober for the show, he's not leaking as much. Yeah, it's true. It is true, actually. Like, I, you know, I'm managing editor. Like, I haven't written at all this week. Basically, I wrote like two little news posts or something. Like, usually, I, back in the day, I'd be pumping out like two or three editorials a week, and now I've just managed to put in like two news posts while I have like fifty thousand meetings, and then also like, you know, training new staff and stuff like that. It's weird. It's really weird, but you know, gotta pay the bills. I'm I'm determined to move out of my girlfriend's parents' house before I'm forty. <laughs> so I'm desperately saving up money to try and like get a house or something. But you know, in this economy, Rand, mm-hmm. have you seen the economy? Yeah, the economy is something else. My parents forever. Uh, Editon says, from what you know, which one has has you more excited? Oh, that's a. Uh... It's uh, a <laughs> it's a loaded question. Which one has you more excited? Oh, about the showcase. Yeah, PlayStation versus Xbox. I mean, of what I know, honestly, I think PlayStation's got more stuff that will appeal to me in it. To be quite completely transparent, um, but I I don't know that much about either show. So, you know, there could be stuff Xbox's show that. You know, I'm I'm eager to find out more about like uh, Ara Ara History Untold. I know Rand doesn't care about that strategy game, and I know you know not a lot of people care about strategy games, but I do love me some four X strategy. So I'm eager to find out what you know what they're doing to bring some you know uniqueness to the genre. Because honestly, I feel like you know paradox and civilization and you know a lot of these games they're just you know Age of Wonders even Age of Wonders four. It's it's cool, but it's again, it's still just Civ at the end of the day. A little bit different, and it's not that different from Age of Wonders Planetfall either. So, I'm really intrigued to to see you know what Ara History Untold does to earn its place in the genre and not just be another you know for the sake of it four X strategy game. But yeah, I you know I, I need to learn more. I need, I need to see more. I'm I'm hopeful, you know, that Xbox is going to deliver. And generally, Xbox showcases have been pretty good. It's just that, you know, we end up either the games they show end up not being particularly great, or they end up taking a million years to make. You know, it's why we talk about the elusive five. The I elusive really want to see. Yeah, mm-hmm. if I um, I'm you know, I really want to see the games that I want to see. I want to see Avowed. If Avowed looks great, then yeah, you already Hellblade seen Avowed. Looks though. great. I've seen pre-alpha footage. Of sure, Avowed. yeah. So and like. from what I've heard, it looks very different. Really? It looks very different from the pre-alpha footage. Well, I mean, it did go through a reboot, right? To make it bigger, essentially. Yeah, yeah kind of. I mean, yeah, like the first iteration, I, I wouldn't even call it a reboot. It was just like, you know, this this was the first slice they made. And they're like, okay, that's good. Let's, you know, now make the real client or something. It's kind of the impression I got from the, the discussions I heard. Um but yeah, I've I've heard that it's way more interesting and way more because I said before that it, it looked like it looked like the outer world to Skyrim, right? Because the outer world had the stylized stylized stuff about it. Um, so I'm intrigued to see if it still looks like that or if it looks like something different now. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, also, State of Decay three, or, you know, State of Decay three could really bring it around for me as well. Also, Gears of War six, love me some Gears. Eager to find out what they do there. So, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff they could do to to make that show more appealing to me. But the stuff that I've heard about right now, like I'm not a big Forza guy, and some of the games that they're going to show there, I'm you know I'm not that hyped for uh, personally. I think a lot of people here will be hyped for them. Um, I think Rand might be hyped for them, Ooh. but not me. Oh, yeah. that means Hellblade 2. Yeah, boy. I'm pretty excited for Hellblade 2. No, oh, please. You've not, you've done nothing but slander Hellblade like forever on this show. Like nothing <laughs> but slander. Like don't I don't want to see you come around in the sim. Like Jez is sort of. You guys remember how Jez slandered Halo. All leading off to launch of Infinite. Slandered the ever-loving shit out of that game. 
every episode Lego game looks like blah blah. And then it was then you played it was like, hey, it's actually really good. Really enjoying the multiplayer. The story single player was pretty good. And then like once everybody started kind of turning on 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 Halo, Jez was like, actually, he put he pushed up his glasses and and brought his fedora down to the to the tip of his nose and was like, <laughs> actually, Halo wasn't really any good at all, anyways. You know, <laughs> the multiplayer, whatever, yeah, and the single I, I player. Enjoy- yeah, come Bro, on. I enjoy seven out of ten games. I mean, sometimes. sure, fair enough, but like. I don't want you to go because nothing. Because not only do you do this on the show, you disparage Hellblade to me in the DMs because you know how much I like it. So you're just like <laughs> constantly. I just need it to be more gameplay based. Sure, than I, base, I, bro. me I'm too. Sorry. Me too. Me too. But I'm just saying I don't want you to be like I'm 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 I'm, I'm actually excited for Hellblade two after all Dude, this time. If they, if they show that it's more gameplay based than walking based, I would be all over that. I love the world. I love Norse mythology. I should love that game, but I just don't like walking around in games or in real life, bro. I like killing things, yeah. and Hellblade didn't let me kill things. So yeah. if Hellblade 2 lets me kill more things, I will be totally on that train. But right now, I don't know if it's going to let me kill more things. It could just be a massive art project that looks very pretty, mm. which is great and fine. I, I like art too, but it's not a game. If I can't kill things, it's not a game. It's an art project. It's a movie. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with experiences. There's nothing wrong with games as a movie. What if it you makes know, you like... feel? Killing things makes me feel, bro. Ah, oh, okay. Fair enough. No, if if I if I can only watch killing things in a cutscene, then it makes me feel irritated. It makes me feel like why can't I do that? Why? Why does the Why does the NPC get to have all the fun? You know, can't couldn't they afford to put some combat in this game? You know that kind of thing. So yeah, I need to see some killing, please. All right. Ooh, the one and only <laughs> Mister Maddie plays drops a super chat and says, "Trust me, he won't leak it. I already tried." Is this true? Can you confirm, Jez, that Mister Maddie plays try to get you to leak everything to him? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Uh, what yeah, he hit you up in the Discord. DMs is like, "Hey, Jez, you know, uh, why don't you, uh, <laughs> you know, tell me what's going on at the Xbox show?" Yeah, well, honestly, I don't know that much. I only know like I know uh, four games. Four games, okay, four games. I mean, it's still um, that's... Beside, that not that doesn't include Forza, which we expect. So five five games if you include Forza. So that's all I know, you know. And and if there's going to be you know an average of thirty games there, that's a very tiny amount of show, you know. Mm-hmm. So I don't really know that much. Yeah, but I mean, it's also yeah. two weeks away, so time to time yeah. to learn more. Uh, Jax82 says, by the time you explore those thousand planets in Starfield, Starfield 2 will be out already. No, no. Uh, Fallout 5, Fallout 5 um, probably won't even be out by that point. Well, right. dude, I've heard some really, I've heard some Tim Fall hat conspiracy theories. Oh, recently. all right. Well, uh, Everborn Saga's not here, but let's hear some conspiracy theories. All right, let's go. Some people think Starfield is Fallout 5. Say what? Some people think Starfield is Fallout in the future. So, Star, so one of the planets is the planet of Fallout, and this is just way yes. into the future? Yes, hmm. because because in Tim Kaine said that the or, the original reason for the Vault experiments was to prepare humanity for interstellar travel, and now there's a there's a Tim Fall hat conspiracy that um that I can't remember the name of it now, but that's in Starfield that interstellar corporation or whatever they're called is actually the successor to Vault Tech. Interesting. Would that be a Can big you... thing if Starfield was confirmed to be in the Fallout universe? Yeah, I don't know. I huh. don't know. So we're actually. So are you saying one of the planets in Starfield is going to be Fallout Five, essentially, where you go there and it's like, oh, we have Fallout at home, and Fallout at home is a picture of Starfield, and one of the planets is Fallout, and you'd be like, you don't have to wait to twenty thirty to play Fallout Five. You have the Fallout planet. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. Like it's it's Earth, but destroyed yeah. by nuclear war. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. It's just it's just a, a Tim Fall Out thing. I think Mr. Matty Play has already already mocked this. I'm sure this, he has um, this uh, this theory. But hey, who knows, man? Who knows? 
Uh, we have a uh, uh, Brett Bingham saying, "Jez, just confirm, just confirmed Killer Instinct two announcement." Oh, did you? No, I did not. I did not. Yeah. I don't know. Damn. Th- I don't even. I don't even know if that 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 thing exists, man. Um, it's it's fun to think about, but I don't uh, think it exists. We have Eduardo MLS. PlayStation announces a showcase delivers it seven days later. Xbox announces one month in advance, and we have all this waiting. What's best? Greetings from Portugal. Well, they're serving two different sort of things. Xbox is kind of having like a physical get together, right? Fan fest, the media kind of all going to be there. So like where PlayStation is kind of, Hey, it's just a showcase. It's digital. There's really nothing else going on, but Xbox is doing like, so that you have to announce it way in advance because people have to have their plans about whether or not they're going to be in LA around that time. It'd be totally different if Sony was also sort of doing uh, something similar to a fan fest or there was going to be opportunities for press and influencers and stuff because they would have to have some lead time. Um, Mm. As for what's best, I mean, that depends. Do you like a one-month lead-in, all the talk and speculation about what potentially could be there, or do you like only having to wait seven days? I mean, I I see benefits and cons to, to both. Pros and ben- pros and cons to either one, right? Um, sure. It just depends on really what you prefer, you know. Yeah. Uh, what do you prefer? What do I prefer? Yeah. What do you prefer, bro? Um, I well, I don't know. It it feels like we've known the date for the Xbox showcase since last year. Anyways, is like we all sort of just knew they're just gonna do it on the same date a year from now. So it's like, it's, it's not like, even though they officially announced it a month ago, like they had already had already talked about it even before that. Um, it, it kind of gives me shades of older E3 where there's a lot of like lead up and build up that spans over the course of time. Uh, whereas like PlayStation is very much like they announce something and it like hits and it's like, Oh, by the way, you don't have to wait very long. Uh, cause it's, it's next week. So I don't know. I like, honestly, I'm not sure which one I prefer. Um, to be honest with you, like I, I sometimes like there is this thing where I like the long lead in where you can hear more about stuff, where you can have more time to discuss things versus like, Oh, by the way, this happens in five days. I think Xbox um, has to do it this way because people have to plan travel. They have to, you know, if people are going to fan fest, they have to plan travel. You have to get hotels and the, the more, the more lead time you've got, the cheaper it is. So, you know, if they announce if they announced fan fest, like the, the week before you're looking at like a million, million, billion dollars for a hotel. So Xbox has no choice, but to do it this way at the end of the day. But right. Yeah. Um, Alexander dark 91. Well, and also when they didn't do it, do it like that back in 2020, when there wasn't like the fan fest thing. And I think even 2021, uh, they didn't, they, they didn't announce those like far in advance. Like those were announced mm-hmm. like a couple weeks in advance, maybe a, a week in advance. Cause you don't need that much prep time for a digital showcase without any physical presence. But because it has a physical presence, they have to announce things earlier. Um, Alexander Dark says, Jez, with what you know about the Xbox show, are you hyped? Also, do you think Xbox saves any announcements for QuakeCon? A very similar super chat to what you've already said. So I guess, like, you already talked about if you're hyped. Do you think Xbox saves any announcements for QuakeCon? Because there's still the whole, hey, is Bethesda going to be at the show? Um, Because it's just Mm. called the Xbox Game Showcase, and Starfield is on afterwards. So... You know, does does do they have any anything from Bethesda, or do they wait for QuakeCon? What do you think? It's really hard to say. I don't know, like, what the priority, how the priority of QuakeCon in in Microsoft's you know mentality, because at the end of the day, you know, the Xbox brand is on the back foot right now, and they kind of need everything they can to pull pull it out of that. You know, you've got IGN writing mean articles about them and stuff like that and i expect more of those kind of articles to come uh 
especially if the showcase doesn't deliver. Um, so I kind of think I kind of feel like you need to pull out all the stops at this showcase if you want to change the the media narrative around. Um, but at the same time, I think there'll be stuff at QuakeCon as well. Maybe it'll be like a more in depth, more in depth looks at things. You know, a DLC maybe at QuakeCon. Maybe smaller game announcements. Like if they're you know, I think they announced that they were bringing back uh, Doom. Was it Doom Two? I can't remember. No, it was Quake quake one i think quake one remastered or something i can't remember what it was but there was like some smaller re-release of one of their smaller game or one of their older classic games or whatever i think that was at quake on i could be wrong about that actually but yeah i think like um i think you're gonna see the bulk of the announcements at this show i don't think there'll be anything at gamescom either you know right. very very little i'm not even gonna bother going to gamescom this year i think <laughs> But we'll see. Uh, Jacob says, no offense to Jez, but I agree with Rand. I would go so far to say that I hate Jim Ryan's way of thinking. Blockbuster's meta, not taking risks. Hmm. I mean, I agree in a way, you know. I think, like, it's a good thing that Xbox guns for variety. It is a good thing, right? But you know, it's really not helping them uh, commit to quality quality control. Because you think when you have like when you have like um, brand perception to worry about, that it does give detract it gives detractors a lot of ammunition, right? I think for better or worse. Um, but maybe they should just stick to their guns and just keep plowing ahead with that sort of unique variety maybe game pass means none of that stuff matters anyway so i mean i never said that i didn't want to see the variety you know i'm not sure what you're disagreeing with exactly to be honest yeah what's he disagreeing with um <laughs> i don't know I'm, I'm not too sure i think um I think Xbox just needs to be able to do both. I want to see more variety. I want to see the variety, but I also want to see, I want to see the you know the AAA bangers, quote unquote, whatever whatever that means. I want to see those too. I think they should be able to do both. Yeah. Uh, DS Oman says, Jazz, what makes Pillars Universe interesting compared to other fantasy universes? Because you 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 actually like the Pillars Universe, and that's what Avowed is. Yeah, I I love the Pillars universe, and I think like kind of pill what Pillars gives me is kind of like that sort of the old school feel that I don't feel like I get from Dragon Age anymore. You know, it's kind of that very gritty sort of I, I, do they call it high fantasy? I think when it's sort of like grounded in realism fantasy, it's almost like Diablo, Diablo in a way, super gray, super dark. A very dangerous world, you know, where you you know you step outside the castle walls and there's monsters and things creeping around and you know, some of the stuff in Pillars of Pillars of Eternity, man, like truly shocking. You know, some of the site like the side quests are really high quality as well. And I think like with with Pillars of Eternity, one of the things I really loved about that game is that obsidian, um, that obsidian sensibility towards branching narrative which uh, again triple a players don't do anymore and i think the reason they don't do it is telemetry you know they, they do telemetry where um uh where they you know i remember when ea they released a bunch of stats after mass threat free launched and they were like only 20 percent of people play as a renegade right so what did they do in mass effect andromeda they took away being a renegade in Mass Effect Andromeda, because the telemetry said nobody wanted to play as a renegade. But what they didn't think about was that the people who chose Paragon, their decisions no longer had any weight because it was no longer their choice. You have to play as a Paragon now. You cannot play as anything else. So, you know, when you strip away choice because your telem telemetry says, well, people didn't pick this option, which means they didn't like it. That means they liked the choice you did give them, you know? So I, th I think a lot of AAA developers have just sort of stripped away on some of that stuff, which is why I'm, I'm worried about Dragon Age Dreadwolf, because I think Dragon Age Dreadwolf is going to be the same thing, where you just don't have any choice. Like even, um, 
even Dragon Age Inquisition, like the choices didn't matter in Dragon Age Inquisition as much as they mattered in Dragon Age 2, which didn't as matter as much in Dragon Age Origins, you know, and it's, it's a really sad thing. You know, some of the stuff you could do in Dragon Age Origins was hilarious, you know. You could be like, you could be really nasty, you know, and I love that stuff. I always pick that stuff if there's an opportunity to be so, to do that. And then you can, you know, the replayability, you can play it again as, and to the other option. Like there was so many ways in Dragon Age Origins to um to complete the the forest quest with the werewolves and stuff. There were so many ways you could complete that quest, you know. And Pillars of Eternity is the same way, where it's like there's, there's so many ways to complete a quest. So I really like. I'm hoping that with Avowed, we get some of that DNA back. We get some of that. Your decisions actually matter back. Like even Todd Howard admitted in some of the interviews about Starfield that Fallout 4 lost its way where some of the um some of the decisions you make in Fallout 4 didn't have anywhere near as much impact as Fallout 3 or New Vegas or even Skyrim or even Oblivion you know and Fallout 4 was just like you know because they didn't have the silent protagonist and they they didn't want to do all the vo- the voiceovers or something i don't know uh, for all the different outcomes like you'd get you get four dialogue options and like two of them would be yes and two of them would be no and then all four options lead to the same outcome you know um i hated that so much about fallout 4 even though i like i did put a lot of hours into it it was mostly base building because the 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 branching narrative was almost non-existent so i'm hoping if i bring some of that back not only brings it back but also makes it a trend again and then we just start getting more games like that again but mm-hmm. we'll have to wait and see painful discourse says is great. name a game plate confined um D- 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 dead planet says based on what jez knows would this show be the one i mean he already said he knows like four or five games at the xbox show and maybe the similar amount to playstation and yeah. like i already said if you go back and watch the last two shows there's like 30 plus games so like four or five based off of 30 there's the hell of a lot more that we're yeah. going to make or break the show, as some people like to to say, right? Like the show need, is so important; it needs to. If it sucks, well, then you know it's Xbox it's over. Doomed. Yeah, it's, it's, it's doom, doom and gloom. Andrew thirteen, doom. Outer Worlds tease. Outer Worlds teases at the end it, that it's a Fallout universe. Well, it started off as like a Fallout, uh, well, Obsidian's version of Fallout. So I I don't know if you see that happening. Uh, Big Froman fourteen. Rand, I know you've gotten better at Pokemon names, so pronounce Blastos again, Cofigurus, Inti, and Mimikyu. <laughs> oh, whatever. you got Mimikyu. <laughs> you yeah. got Mimikyu at least. Uh, he also says, Jez, oh, only one yeah. can go: Pokemon or World of Warcraft. Oh, easily, Pokemon. easy Pokemon. That's that's why Pokemon. Uh, I, I would like a, a thousand times put uh, World of Warcraft to save that. Supernova says, Rand. Are you celebrate broadcasting 10 hours of content about Pokemon after the ABK deal closes? No. There'll be no celebration about Pokemon whatsoever. So <laughs> I really want to do another charity rant plays dumb game. Nah, we're not just... doing we're not we're not doing one of those ever again. Dude, we've raised like eight hundred. I know we did, charity. but like nobody 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 in chat we was, nobody we in chat wants nobody in chat wants to see me suffer again like that, right? Yeah, so. they do. I think I think they do, bro. No. I think chat chat wants to see you suffer for chat. I have again. veto power right? and I veto it. I certainly certainly want to see you suffer for charity. I veto it. And if anybody in chat well, maybe sa- you could anybody, make me suffer. If anybody in chat says they want to see me play Pokemon, I'll just ban them. I'll shadow ban them. They'll ne- their voices will never be heard again. <laughs> so be careful. Wow. That's yeah. mean. Well, since you did it last time, like you, maybe we could do it the other way this time. Maybe you make me play a terrible game. No, it's a terrible. I'll make you play a good. No, I'll make you play a good one so you have to actually finish it. See, look at look uh, at every, look at everybody in chat being like, "We're you're right. We don't want to see you in pain." Like you're so nice. Everybody in chat's so nice to me. Like, yeah, don't play Pokemon. We don't want to see you suffer. Amazing mm. Xbox Two community we have. <laughs> Look at everybody all, all concerned about my, my well-being. They don't want me to play Pokemon, so there, Jez. Ha. Uh, Jax82 says, if the Xbox show suck, sucks, starts let's late blame Jez. Yeah, blame you for everything. Blame Jez. Um, so I figured since I've played enough of the game now, I want to talk briefly about Star Wars, Jez. Star Wars 
uh, Jedi Survivor. Um, if you guys are enjoying the show, make sure you hit the like button and please subscribe. I am 30, 30 hours in, and I'm, I'm, I think I'm at the end, or at least close to the end. And God damn, what an incredible game this is. Whew. They, they made some really strong improvements from the first game. Although, I will say, it has one of the worst performance modes I've ever seen for a game. It does not run well in the Xbox Series X whatsoever. Um, I mean, some of it's saved by VR, like VR. Like that's my biggest complaint about the game is that the frame rate is awful, and the game is so good it like outshines the poor performance in certain areas. Um, but otherwise, like they created a sequel that improves on pretty much everything that I really liked about the first one. And it does a thing that I, I hate games do where you, 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 you take a character and you, you build them up and they become super powerful. And then the second game, they like take all the, all the stuff they learn away. So now you got to like learn all those things again. Like they give you all that stuff right away from the very beginning. Um, and I would say probably my biggest outside of the performance for this game is probably the lack of rewards for pure exploration because most of the rewards you get scattered around are either things you can you find that you can buy cosmetics for your character or new colors or chests that have like new haircuts and new lightsabers like a lot of the exploration is cool from a gameplay perspective of seeing how they built everything very similar to like Elden Ring's world where you're like, God damn, like how do they build all this intercon intercon intercon? Uh, what's the word I'm trying to say? Inter interconnectivity, right? Interconnectivity. Where it's like how everything like folds back in on itself. And it's really cool to like go through an area and do all the jumping uh, puzzles and stuff to get, to find this one thing. And then it wrap back around so you can have an easy way to exit. Yeah. Right. I was so mind blown in Elden Ring where you come. What's the castle called? The first castle you come to where you fight. Um, after you fought, what's his face with the staff? I can't remember his name either. Um, the Blood Omen guy. That that castle. I was just like, how did they do this in an open world? Like, it's it's a technical marvel, man. But yeah, continue. Well, yeah, the, <laughs> and, and the second that first you start off in Curacao, and then the next planet you go to is like massive it is so huge and there's so there's not a lot of planets to go to in this one compared to the first i think but that world kobo is absolutely massive and it constantly gets bigger and bigger but like the exploration aspect outside of like trying to find everything and enjoying how they built it a lot of the end rewards just are lame it's like oh i got a mullet for my character or i got a new paint job for my mullet. lightsaber so it's very similar to like the God of War exploration where like a lot of the stuff you get is just like, oh, I got a new armor piece or I got some like, what is the the currency in God of War? Like you don't really get anything, I don't know, that, that really, that really makes you smile. That gives you those, um, that like adrenaline boost when you find something super cool. It's just cosmetic stuff. And it's and even and at, at first it's like you're loving playing the game, but then like you're like oh, I don't want another chest. It's like what am I doing? Like why am I exploring this stuff? Like mm. I I don't really like that. I don't like opening up a chest and getting a mustache. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it was so cool in Elden Ring where you like you go off the beaten path and you find like some absolutely insane weapon or something. It's just like oh now now I'm like ten times more powerful. They really nailed that game. Yeah. Man. Well, I mean, they they're, really they're, that's not it. to say there aren't some things you can find. Like you got obviously your you can increase your health or increase your force, find force tiers uh, that give you some sort of challenge to get more skill points and stuff like that. Uh, so there are. It's those... not. It's not a stat based game, is it? No, not really. N not really yeah. at all. It's not I like your your lightsaber that's... improves or yeah. anything, right? Well, that's, um, I suppose that's the issue with exploration. It's like, if you don't have, like, a robust RPG layer where you can make a character build, you know. In Elden Ring, it's like, yeah, we can we can slap something there for casters. Or or in Di Diablo, you can be like, well, we'll slap, I don't know, this boss has a high chance to drop a, a spell for a specific type of druid, you know. 
I suppose if if your game isn't really an RPG at the end of the day, and you suppose you're kind of limited with what kind of rewards you can give. I mean, I, I'm I, as I was saying that I started remembering Assassin's Creed One and the exploration amounted to like getting flags. <laughs> Do you remember the flags in Assassin's Creed? Yeah, I remember. Jeez, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the story is pretty good. Uh, the combat is like amazing. I, I I'm still like blown away that they are able to basically make a Star Wars into a Dark Souls game because that's you know essentially what this is, and it's just incredible to just play through it. Even though the frame rate sucks on performance mode and the VR helps, but doesn't like completely wash it away. Um, I I've kind of flipped back and forth between quality mode and like quality mode. God damn, the game looks incredible especially on like Coruscant and some of the lightings they do on the different planets mm. but like every day I kind of get on and play for like five hours and I'm like always even even though I'm 30 hours in I'm still loving exploring everything like there was a point I usually get in open world games like a Dead Island 2 or Ghostwire Tokyo where it, they're very enjoyable and I, I I like both games but at some point you're like over the exploration and you kind of just want the game to be kind of reach its conclusion like it overstayed its welcome because i tend to like to do everything in the game or everything in a section before moving on and jedi kind of doles it out where like oh you can't explore everywhere because you need the new abilities that you eventually get i'm over 30 hours in this and i haven't hit that point where i'm like i just want this to be over and you have the different like you have you have the five different light- lightsaber stances they give you in this one cross guard blaster dual wield the double lightsaber and the single one. I've been using blaster and dual wield the whole game. And maybe that's another uh, misstep the game has because the way the skills are kind of set up where since you can only hold two lightsaber stances at a time, it, it basically kind of forces you to really only invest in two of the lightsaber stances, right? Because you can only hold two at once and there's five of them. And you still have different trees for your 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 like health and things like that nature and your force stuff. So it kind of just forces you to pick two stances. So I sort of I like dual wield right from the beginning compared to single and the double bladed because it was new. Because I did single and double bladed last game, so I was like I I wanted a different stance. So I was just like, all right, you know, I'm gonna use this this dual wield and it and it's it's great. And then I got the blaster stance and I'm like, wow, this is really good. Because it gives you a lot of range with the blaster. And you can close a lot of distance with some of the abilities. So I'm like, this is way better than the other ones. And then you get cross guard. But by the time I got cross guard, I was like, well, I'm so invested in these other two. I'm just going to kind of delegate my points my points into getting like better, like, you know, force push and force lift and stuff like that. Right? Um, so, but other than that, like... It's right up there with Hi-Fi Rush for my game of the year. And I, I know like yeah. Resident Evil 4 is right there. Like Resident Evil 4 is a remake, but goddamn it was so incredible. And so it's, it's like right. So like so for me it's like the three games are basically I it basically comes down to I think how Star Wars is going to end. Right? I'm not at the ending yet. But Hi-Fi Rush got better as it went. Uh Star Wars Jedi Survivor has mostly remained at a high consistent level and it is kind of increasing there was anybody who's played it there was a moment on jetta during one of the main missions where the set piece that they led you on and through bro i was so hyped my jaw kind of dropped on the floor for what was going on and it's been a while for a set piece like that to really kind of amaze me i was like holy crap this is actually happening um Anybody, anybody who's played the game probably knows exactly what set piece I'm talking about on Jetta. Uh, and actually, there's kind of two set pieces on Jetta, but the first one was the one that I was like, "Holy shit, man!" Respawn knows jealous, exactly man. what they're doing. You, you need I to play. I haven't even finished the first game. Oh, well, yeah, I mean that's 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 a problem. That's the problem because you don't finish games. I did. I finished. Um. Oh, what's it called now? Redfall. <laughs> I finished Redfall. God, that's depressing. One of the only games I finished this year is Redfall. <laughs> Oh man, and then like the next game I'm gonna play, Diablo is is unfinishable. So great. Yeah, look at everybody in chat. We have uh, All Might says Jetta was mind blowing. Space Dovakin, insane moment. 
uh, Abdel says that moment was insane. Scores says that set piece was mind blowing. Um, yeah, you like gave me hard, man. bro, bro. Gave me I was sitting. I was like, wow, like this is actually like this was that was so freaking cool. And it's it's been a while since a game delivered on that front, like something you really weren't expecting, and something that really damn cool that happened. Um, it was their respawn is such an incredible studio from Apex Legends to Titanfall to now Star Wars. I mean, and you talk about two different types of games, right? Apex Legends to Star Wars, it couldn't be any more different than each other, right? But bro, where's my time? Where's my Titanfall? 3, I know bro? where's Titanfall three. Um. But yeah, like I said, it's it's up there. It's like basically a three-way tie right now between Hi-Fi Rush, Jedi Survivor, and Resident Evil 4. And mm. I kind of put at least... Uh, would weigh more towards originality. So I would probably put Hi-Fi Rush and Star Wars kind of closer to and above Resident Evil 4. Because like Resident Evil 4 is also... It's incredible what they did, but it's also built off the bones of an incredible game already. Right? Um, yeah, but like, bro, this year has been insane. I, I am loving this year so far, despite the fact that Redfall was a turd, uh, from one of my favorite studios, uh, the base this year has been probably the best year so far of this, of this whole generation. Um, yep. I agree. Wholeheartedly, bro. Love, love and love and star Wars. And we'll see how it ends. Um, but, uh, Yeah. What else, Jez? Um, all right, let's talk about well, let's talk about some ABK stuff. Some ABK things. Uh Re- ABK. Rajandra Re- says, did Jez finish Persona 5? No, of course not. Jez finished games? <laughs> I mean, of course not. I'm getting through it. Gradually. Getting yeah, I'm gonna it. have to put a time limit on this shit next time. Well, I've, I'm 50 hours in, so it's not it's not like I'm not going to finish it. You still got now. another 50, 60 hours to go. You're not even halfway, bro. You're yeah. not even at the final form yet. Uh, well, have you finished it? Uh, no, no, I haven't played. I haven't played any of the Persona. Should I play Persona Five? I and mean, people tell me I should, no. but no, you won't like it. I won't like. I won't like Persona. Okay. It's it's demonic Pokemon. Do you oh, not know what? about Persona? No, I don't really know much it's about po- Persona. It's Pokemon, man. It's Ew. Pokemon. I don't want it's that. It's demonic Pokemon. So uh, instead of Pokemon, you you get demons, Personas, and then you equip them and use their spells and stuff. I suppose it, it, it's a very, it's a very o- gross oversimplification to call it that, but it's kind of like the Personas you equip are, I guess... Similar to materia from Final Fantasy VII, but that again, that's another oversimplification. Um, but yeah, that's the base of the game. Uh, but yeah, you won't like it, man. Okay, it's, I mean, uh, they and Sim. Maybe, maybe uh, I need to start from the beginning with Persona Three Remake whenever that comes out, huh? You have to start from Persona One if you want to go. For oh the yeah, I suppose so. I suppose so. Uh, Jade read in the super chat says Gears of One Mad World trailer is one of the best trailers ever made. It's been too long since Xbox been able to generate hype on that level. That's a pretty hype it damn trailer. Pretty, it was pretty goddamn hype. It was, yeah. Yeah. Have they created a game uh, another another hype moment like that since then? I mean, Halo 3's trailer, I think, was pretty damn hype. But I mean, the fact that I have to even go think about all the way back then. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess. I mean, because most of the people writ off, wrote off Xbox during the Xbox One gen, and a lot of their announcements really didn't light the world on fire. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you might be you might be in the ballpark. Uh, one, one of the – yeah, but people still talk about that Gears trailer still to this day, which shows the power it did have, right? Mm. Um, what else we got here? Um, let's talk about ABK because that was, it's not just about ABK because the European commission approved the deal, but also China approved it as well. Uh, yeah. but nobody's really talking about the China thing and we'll get to that when we get to that. It's mostly about the CMA, uh, because European commission basically came to, well, the st- they had the same concerns as CMA, right? Initially, for their preliminary settings, right? Uh, pre- pre- preliminary investigation, they were worried that the deal would reduce competition in the console space, 
uh, reduced competition in multi-game subscription and reduced competition in the cloud, right? And both regulators came to the conclusion that that wouldn't reduce anything in the console space and it wouldn't reduce reduce anything in multi-game subscriptions. So Game Pass wasn't going to dominate. Uh, Sony wasn't going to be threatened. In fact, the European Commission basically says that Sony could easily was weather it even if Microsoft even took it exclusive, right? Uh, basically throwing all of Sony's arguments that they talked about like, oh, we can't live without Call of Duty and all the things they said when all the, this whole deal st- w- happened. They basically said, no, that doesn't doesn't matter. Yeah. But they did agree with the CMA that cloud was a problem, that there could be a, a substantial lessening of competition in cloud. So it was okay. We know the CMA blocked on cloud to the shock of everybody, including Microsoft. But it seems the European Commission was more understanding because they accepted the remedies that Microsoft was was offering. Um, Brad Smith had tweeted out the day that it happened that uh, the European Commission has required Microsoft to license popular Activision Blizzard games automatically to competing cloud gaming services. This will apply globally and will empower millions of consumers worldwide to play these games on any device they choose. So that's interesting because Microsoft had entered into uh, deals with cloud-based companies like Boosteroid and Ubidos and uh, NVIDIA. In fact, some of the NVIDIA uh, Xbox games are already being added, I think, right now. Like Gears 5 was just added to NVIDIA, right? So that that deal is sort of being consummated. Um. Lulu, uh, she had an interesting <laughs> uh, set of, set of uh, tweets uh, about this. A lot of people are really mad at Lulu. I, I mean, I, I I can't imagine why. She says Activision Blizzard's <laughs> plans to meaningfully expand our investment and workforce through the EU throughout the e- European Union, and we're excited for the benefits our deal with Microsoft offers players in Europe and elsewhere. Which is contrast to what Bobby Kotick said about the UK, where he said. UK is closed for business and the tech is tech sector is going to leave where she's basically saying, we're going to expand our investment and work for us throughout the EU. Uh, today, the European commission approved our merger with Microsoft subject to strict remedies to ensure robust competition continues in our rapidly growing industry. Um, and with the EU's firm yet pragmatic, unbiased and fact driven approach to regulation, we expect these European teams to continue delivering growth and innovation going forward. Now, I could be wrong, and Lulu likes to call out people when they make kind of generalizations or summarize stuff that's wrong, but that tweet to me is like pure shots fired at the CMA. Like, yes. pragmatic. She's basically saying the CMA is the opposite of pragmatic, which what would be the opposite of pragmatism. Uh, You're the writer. Don't ask me. I'm not a writer. Oh, uh, yeah. So the opposite of pragmatic, she's basically implying the CMA is biased, right? Because she says I'm biased. And that the European Union did fact-driven approach counter to, I guess, what the CMA did, which would be non-fact-based driven. I guess it's not <laughs> fact-based driven when you're a biased, uh, uh, you know, when, when you have a, a bias that you want to work towards. Um, mm-hmm. And then maybe the most surprising thing of all this was the CMA had a response immediately within a yes, couple minutes. Is. Within a couple minutes, the CMA came out trying to justify their actions, trying to justify their decision. And uh, they said, here's our response to the European Commission's announcement today. The UK, US, and European com- competition authorities are unanimous that the merger would harm competition in cloud gaming. The CMA concluded that cloud gaming needs to continue as a free competitive market to drive innovation and choice in this rapidly evolving sector. Microsoft proposals accepted by the European Commission today would allow Microsoft to set the terms and conditions for this market for the next 10 years. They would replace a free, open, and competitive market with one subject to ongoing regulation of the games Microsoft sells, the platforms to which it sells them, and the conditions of sale. This is one of the reasons the CMA's independent panel group rejected Microsoft proposals and prevented this deal. 
While we recognize and respect the European Commission is entitled to take a different view, the CMA stands by its decision. Basically saying, we're right, you're wrong. Right? And yes. I said in my video, ah, smells of weakness, desperation, almost to a certain extent, that yes. they had to even respond, not only respond, but respond immediately. Like they were F5-ing Twitter and waiting to see the decision so they could say, it's like they knew they were going to be under fire and they needed to uh, justify the, the, the conclusions that they came to to their consistent constituents and everybody else. And that just smells of pure weakness to me. I don't know. What, what, what's your read on all this, Jez? I think the read is ultimately that it's political now. Mm. The CMA is completely independent. And a lot of, a lot of the UK's um, historical sort of uh, approach to some governmental institutions is that they should operate independently, right? There was this whole sort of massive argument that Elon Musk triggered when he said the BBC is government funded, right? The BBC is paid for with taxes, but they are completely independent of the government. Well, in theory. I mean, that's a, that's a debate for another day. But, you know, at least historically, the BBC has been independent of the government. And uh, this, the BBC chairman recently had to resign because it came out that he'd, he'd helped Boris Johnson, the former prime minister, secure a loan. So that violates impartiality, potentially. So, you know, there, there's, there are regulators that regulate our regulators in the UK, sp supposedly. Now, it's become political because... Um, one of the big, the big the big issue plaguing the UK right now is this concept of making Brexit work. The current government told everyone that Brexit was a good idea and that we should go with it and that it's going to be great and we're going to make it work. We'll be like Singapore, you know, we'll be de deregulated and there'll be tons of business and it'll be great. We'll be able to get rid of all those nasty regulations from Europe, uh, supposedly, and that will be all great. But so far, it's it looks like Britain is poorer. It's less free because we can no longer set the terms of any of the deals we do. And uh, it's just the worst of all worlds. So it basically, Brexit was a massive con. So it's become politically sensitive because supposedly this government was all about deregulation, deregulation, deregulation to attract businesses, to attract American tech businesses who, who are in the trillions of dollars and, and attract investment in the country because they can... They can, they can depend on the fact that they won't be impeded by arbitrary government decisions. But here we are with a, with a government-mandated body, independent or not. They are a government-mandated body subject to legislation of the current system, and they are impeding investment in the UK through arbitrary and aggressive uh, regulation. You know, it's the opposite of what the government said they want to do. And to be honest, that's pretty much par for the course with this government. A lot of what they say tends to be the opposite of what they want to do. But the thing is, it's different when you're screwing over regular people to when you're screwing over a mega corporation like Microsoft, who can bring billions of dollars, thousands of jobs to your country, you know? So this has become a politically sensitive now. So you've got the CMA out here spamming a tweet, which they've never done before. At least I couldn't find an example of this. I couldn't find a single example of the CMA replying to a contradictory decision from the European Commission. I've never seen that before, ever. The CMA out here desperately, desperately trying to defend themselves and trying to set narratives, trying to, you know, get out there ahead of ahead of any potential media backlash right because the british media have been very very quiet about this deal so far you've had some rumblings in the financial times but the 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 political press like the daily mail and the times and the telegraph who really make the decision in this country they've been very they've been oddly quiet about this so far i i you know the the right wing press generally I would imagine they would be like, if Europe had done this, if Europe had done this, say, for example, Europe, say, for example, the CMA allowed the deal to happen and the, it was Europe who'd blocked it. I can already see that the right wing press here would be putting out articles like Brazy Europe blocks British growth in jobs or something like that, because, you know, Microsoft's a major employer in the UK, thousands of jobs. You've got Ninja Theory, you've got Playground, hundreds and hundreds of devs. 
um, are all based here. A lot of uh, Blizzard's Blizzard, a lot of um, Blizzard staff are here too, and a lot of um, a lot of Microsoft's devs for Windows are in the UK as well. So you know, I can already see what the spin would be on the other on the other side of of the the coin. But the the fact that it's the CMA blocking it, it's very strange that they'd be. They they're being so quiet about it, you know. But I don't know. But it's like I said earlier. There are, there are much bigger problems facing the UK right now. I think if things were a bit quieter around, you know, um, if the if things were you know not as dire as they are with the cost of living crisis and the war and, and all stuff like that, um, I think things might be different. But yeah, I don't know. It's it's hilarious watching the CMA twist in the wind. And I said at the start of the show, the chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, mm -hmm. whose job it is, is to grow the UK economy. Didn't, didn't he He's, say something about this deal? The directly? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So like the, his, his job is to grow the economy. His job is to make Brexit work and to find outside investment from these American companies. And a lot of the Tory party, their, their dream is to be closer to America, you know, to be closer to America where corporations, you know, dictate to the government rather than the other way around. That's their dream. But they're not able to fulfill this dream, evidently, because of the CMA making this decision. Um, so th there is a political angle to this. And the CMA was in front of a parliamentary committee today to explain some of this stuff. They kind of uh, tried to avoid questions about ABK and kind of sidestepped it. And they just sort of stuck to their narrative that, uh, oh, oh God, what about cloud gaming? Because obviously MPs, they don't know about how big the cloud gaming market is. They don't know it, it affects maybe about 10,000 people in the UK right now. They don't know any of that shit. So they're sort of like, they're sort of hoping that they can sort of slip all of this under the MP, MP's radar. But, you know, increasingly MPs are noticing, you know, you got the chancellor out here going like, oh God, what has the CMA done here? You know, so the, they're saying like CMA should try to remember its wider responsibilities. I think Jeremy Hunt said with regards to the ABK deal. And I think that was sort of like, I think that was a sort of a, a hint at, um, you know, him being like this impacts more than just the uk you know it impacts thousands of jobs around the world in europe and stuff like that and i think what they are probably considering now is the the very real possibility that um microsoft could just sidestep the uk yeah, sidestep yeah. the cma and that would that would be a political nightmare for the government if 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 Microsoft was just like, yeah, hey, we're going to close the deal anyway, um, do your worst to the UK government, that would be a massive blow to the UK's credibility. Because honestly, what could the UK do? What can the UK Fine do? Find them. Find them. So what? It's it's you know I think it, Microsoft could just be like, we're pulling out of the UK. What are you going to do about it? We're going to take away Windows from all the government's computers. Every single I mean civil servant uses Surface. Uh, UK's UK's cyber defense network relies on Windows. You know, there's the Microsoft and Microsoft's annual turnover in the UK uh, profit margin is is only six hundred million. That's like, what's that in percentages of what the the ABK deal is? Like less than one percent. It's it's um. So well, wait, hold on, hold on. So do you think? Because I know Satya also had an interview. Someone asked him about the idea of like, could you see yourself selling a product in the U.S., selling a product in the U U U uh, the European Union, but then not selling the same product in the U.K. And Satya had a little smirk and said, "Let's see how it plays out." Now this has led to a whole bunch of speculation regarding exactly what you're talking about, and I'll just say like, I look, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know anything about U.K. law. Like I don't know how if they could, or I don't know all the different angles, but this has led a lot of people to discuss exactly what Jez is saying about the idea of like one Xbox and Microsoft pulling completely out of the country, which I find absurd. I don't think that could happen. Or like two, I know Pactor has mentioned like spinning off an Activision UK, like an ind like an independent Activision UK closing everywhere else in the world like, and then having this, like, spun-off Activision UK subsidiary or something. Or, like, geofencing, potentially, where it's, like, P 
people in the UK don't get Game Pass or they don't get cloud or they don't get certain games on cloud or, or something like like you're, you're talking about like like those drastic measures correct well who knows man i really think microsoft could call the uk's bluff really the uk yeah I and really you don't do. think I the think... uk is gonna would call microsoft's bluff on the idea of pulling out of the uk and like removing windows and all this like you don't think they would just call it or do you think they? Do you think the point would be? I think I think the the embarrassment that it would cause the the British government would be uh, astronomical at a time where Britain's business credibility is absolutely on the ropes. So I think like it has become political. And if I was if I was Microsoft, I'd be like, you know, like Satya with his wry smile to CNBC. Let's see how it plays out, you know. And then the next day, you've got Jeremy Hunt sort of. Almost in a with a grov a grovelly tone. Grovelly, yeah. Mm. Grovelly. Like, are like you saying he was almost uh, bending the knee? Almost bending the knee, yeah. And he's kind of like, uh, uh, but you gotta you gotta think about this statement, right? The the specific thing he said was, "We respect the CMA's independence." So what what is that? That's not him respecting the CMA's independence. That's him passing the blame. <laughs> That's him saying it wasn't our fault. You know, the CMA is independent. You know, so that. A, that's not him respecting the CMA. That's him passing the blame. Secondly, then him he's like bending the knee to Microsoft by saying, um, "We, you know, the CMA should think about its wider responsibilities. Wider responsibilities, as in to the UK's business credibility. You know, the the the, the whole sort of narrative that the the UK is supposed to be this deregulated haven for business, this Silicon Valley in Europe, which is what Rishi Sunak aspires to be. Now." I really want people to understand. I am not advocating for deregulation. You know, I'm definitely not that kind of guy. You know, I'm not. I'm not a libertarian, for God's sake. I'm just pointing out the hypocrisy and how hilarious it is that this was their plan. Their plan was deregulation, and they're not getting it. They're getting the opposite of deregulation. So in this case, a bit of deregulation will probably help. You know, but generally speaking, regulation is a good thing. Nobody, nobody with their right mind. With a, with a would say that we should live in an, a, a world like Bioshock where nothing's nothing's regulated and you know people can be bought and sold and and all that kind of stuff indentured servitude. Not nobody wants that kind of reality, you know, because that that's like that's like ultimate libertarianism, right? Where everything can be bought and sold. You need some kind of regulations, otherwise you just have anarchy, you just have chaos, you know. But some this is this is a prime example of when regulation just does something stupid and it's when they don't it's usually technology because you know a lot of the people who work at these places they're not experts about technology so they kind of have to take people's word for it and you there could be a, there could be someone who just doesn't want the deal to go through for whatever ideological reason you know like the ftc saying the, the big tech bad big tech bad and we heard this over and over and over again so, like, no one's arguing for deregulation, where everyone should be arguing for smart regulation. Uh, but it's just hilarious that, you know, it, the, one of the benefits of Brexit was supposed to be that we get rid of the European Union's supposed aggressive regulation. Because the European Union, the narrative the media spins here about the European Union is that it's all red tape. Businesses can't thrive because Europe has all this red tape. Well, hang on a sec. If, if, if Europe is the, Europe's the one with all this red tape, why are they approving the deal? <laughs> so you know it's it's just that kind of hilarious hypocrisy and that hilarious sort of epic failure that is the tory government they are they are the most catastrophic clown-like morons that i've Jeez. ever known in my well, life you know, you know, the, Jess, this government I'm i am talking about the cma i'm talking about the government. i know i know i know i have some visual aid here okay give me so, a visual aid no so so you're you're gonna have to bring up the podcast so i'm gonna i'm gonna Un- unhide this right now. now. Uh, so I put it, I put it, I put it up here so everybody can see it while we're talking about the CMA, and it's the tweet that Clobra put out with the meme of um, uh, the Simpsons meme with uh, 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 God, I forget the, I forget who, I forget his name. It's not Smithers. Oh. It's uh, it's uh, it's the it's it's the school it's the school principal. Saying, "Am I out of touch?" Oh, uh, God, I forget. I forget his Seymour. name. Seymour. Yeah, Seymour. Right. So he's sitting there, like thinking, "This." He's the CMA saying, "Am I out of touch?" 
And he says, no, it's everybody else who's wrong. And Clover had this image where it lists like all the other countries that have approved the deal. Austria, Belgium, Brazil, Bulgaria, Chile, China, Croatia, Cyprus, Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, uh, Hungary, Iceland, Ireland, Italy, Japan, uh, Latvia, 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 Latvia. Lithuania, Luxembourg, Liechtenstein, Liechtenstein Malta, <laughs> uh, Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Saudi Arabia, um, Slovakia, Slovenia, South Africa, Spain, Sweden, and Ukraine. And I just, I don't know, it couldn't be more appropriate. Am I out of touch? No, <laughs> it's all the other regulators that are uh, that are wrong, right? I don't know. I thought that was... I thought that was pretty funny. Shout out to Someone Cobra. should email that to the CMA. I, I, I did see people uh, uh, tagging uh, them in it, so I'm I'm sure I'm sure they've seen it. Um, well, I'm sure their social media interns have seen it, but someone needs to send it to the the head of the CMA because she's just. I kind of feel like she means well. Like you watch her in the MPs committee, you can you can. I don't think she's lying, but she's just ignorant. You know, sadly, which is the sad state of affairs for our civil service a lot of the time. Ignorant. Mm. So, um, but China also recently approved the deal as well. They actually approved it today. And they had, um, what did they say about this? I'm going to try to find the the thing here. We have China. Uh, Tom Warren tweeted out, Microsoft confirms China State's Administration for Market Regulation has unconditionally approved. So no, not like basically no, nothing, no concessions. Unconditionally approved this acquisition of Activision Blizzard, making it the 37th country to support the deal. Quote, China's unconditional clearance of our acquisition of Activision Blizzard files clearance decisions from jurisdictions such as the European Union and Japan, bringing the total of the 37 countries representing more than 2 billion people the acquisition combined with our recent commitments to the European Commission will empower consumers worldwide to play more games on more devices. And, yep. you know, like, the more and more <laughs> this kind of goes on, right? Like, you're kind of... Uh, you know? Yeah, I mean, the UK just looks stupid. Like, it's, it's what the UK does. We like to look stupid in this country. We like to do stupid things like Brexit, you know, that make no sense and make everyone poorer. And this is just another one of them. It's like the 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 regulators will be like, oh, yeah, we're saving you from this deal. We're saving you dumb consumers from the deal. Well, like Call of Duty, you'll probably end up in Game Pass in every other country but Britain. Mm-hmm. I kind of feel like that. that's the way it will go. That's the way the deal happens is that Microsoft's just like, okay, fine, we'll leave everything as it is in the UK so you guys can be happy. And the regulators will pack themselves on the back thinking they've preser- preserved some imaginary uk cloud gaming market like this this is your this is this is the hill you want to die on uk cloud gaming market i don't know i kind of feel like eventually the government might just step in because the government can overrule yeah, the, I, don't, the I doubt the government will over they'll put pressure on it I, I think it's more likely that the cat will get involved and either yeah. the cat would overturn it or the cat would just be like send it back to the cma but Without like the cloud, th- we're like, oh, oh, no, your your logic here is wrong, because I think even the uh, European Commission said that, kind of poked holes at the CMA's whole thing about. They said every, that math was wrong. Yeah, like every because their whole th- the it CMA's is. whole thing was like every cl- Game Pass user is a cloud user, which is bullshit, right? Yeah. And the European Commission kind of called that out, and so it's like there's there's some some sta- well i guess microsoft's going to appeal next week or at least file their appeal so we'll know well, where I'll, they're going to i'll tell you something i'll tell you something someone i don't know if i mentioned this last week maybe i did but someone in the uk sent me a survey they received um that basically uh, um, a survey from microsoft that they had to fill in um as part of market research and one of the questions in the survey was how would you feel if xbox cloud gaming was removed from xbox game pass ultimate so like that, I think Microsoft is literally gauging sentiment here about the idea of in the UK splitting Xbox Cloud Gaming out into its own entity, and if you want Call of Duty and Activision games, you have to buy the additional subscription in the UK, and that would make the regulators happy or something. Mm. I don't know. I, I don't. But here's the thing: I don't know if the CMA budges, and I don't know if anything could make them happy. I think they're just. I think 
they I wanna... think I th- I th- yeah I, th- I think they want to block it too but i think like it, i think there will come a point where the government's like you've got to reverse this but they they'll but again it's political right so the message has to be the message will have to be that the C- the government hasn't strong armed the cma so the cma needs to get a win the government needs to get a win so they don't look like complete morons so they need to get a win and and basically they need to they need to get the deal through without making any, everyone look like a complete moron. That's that's the probably the current current goal for the CMA. Um, now, will they achieve this goal? Uh, remains very, very heavily to be seen. But I personally think that's probably the way it's going to go. They'll look, they'll look for an out. They'll look for a way that the CMA can look like they got a win. They'll look for a way that it can look like the government didn't meddle. You know, there's there's something coming up soon where... There's a formality process where the, the CMA formalizes their, their decision and then Microsoft and Activision are allowed to give like one more sort of statement of, of con, you, know, you know, against their decision or whatever. You know, there's, there's a very slim chance they might use that as the out, you know, very slim chance. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. But um, it's just a load of hilar- hilarity right now. It's just, it just can't, it can't happen like this. It's just, it just can't, you know, <laughs> but we'll see. Yeah. Um, it's become a massive problem for the UK. I think. And then, and then, uh, CEO of take two kind of came out in support, uh, yes. in multiple different ways. He, he said, what's good for Microsoft is good for the industry. And he has no problems with, you know, the ABK getting, getting bought by Microsoft. He thinks it's good for the industry. Which yes. a bunch of industry play. I don't. Know, I always find it funny where you have this independent panel, the CMA, who who who's not in the video game industry, telling people in the video game industry what's good for them, even though they're telling those people that this is good for us. But the yeah. the, the those independent people are saying no, it's actually bad for you. Like we're protecting consumers and future and current and future competitors in the cloud gaming market. But the, the those, imaginary people. Yeah, basically. but but the the current ones that are in the market are like we actually want this deal because it's going to help because Call of Duty is going to bring people to playing it and they're giving us a ten year deal. We actually want this to go through because it's going to help our business. And the CMA is no 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 for whatever reason. <laughs> it's it's like it's like they wanted to block from the beginning and they're just they they knew they couldn't block the the console mm. thing because of their math. And they and it was like, oh, we can't do this because the math is wrong, and so we're gonna block on cloud, even though Microsoft has these all these remedies, but they're not good enough. It, it to me, it's like it, it this all just screams like big tech bad, and they want to take a stance and show that they have teeth, and mm-hmm. it's like everywhere else in the world they're going to approve it, and Microsoft will win their court case to the FTC, and. I think Microsoft will not allow one single regulator to stop them. So if like all the other regulators approve, which it seems likely, and the, they beat the FTC in U.S. court, and it's literally the U.K. standing in their way, they'll find somehow some way to close the deal. Yeah, I, I don't know so too, what yeah. way it'll be, but they'll close it. Um, yeah, I, that, that's that's my prediction now. Like it, the deal, the deal will go through, but it'll be messy as hell. Yeah. Somehow. So I don't. I. I. I don't know. I, that's just my feeling. I, like. I, you know. I always. I think I said before. It was like I'm expecting the deal to get blocked, because then when it when it does, I wouldn't be disappointed. And if it goes through, but like, oh, cool, cool, it's done, and we can move on. When I'm really and, and that kind of what happened. So when it did get blocked, I was like, ah, see, I told you so. You should have been right. But now my my concern about this whole thing is. How much is this going to distract Xbox again? We literally ha- had them distracted for a year and a half. And this potentially could go on for another year. Um, we need Xbox leadership. Like, we need them focused on the current now, right? Where it's like, I think the platform suffered from their lack of... Uh, their lack of touch on the Xbox platform and everything this past year and a half because they were focused on this big fish. And I, I get it. Like, it is a big prize. Uh, but now that it may take until January 2025 or sometime in 2024, and there's also the chance that it 
may not happen because there is that possibility. It's like you go after it if you need to, but make sure that you are pursuing the also other studios that potentially are out there. Like you can't afford to get certain affinity to get snatched up or some of these other studios or whatever. Like you, you need to still have your eyes on, on the ball, what's going on here. And I just worry that with Mm -hmm. this going on for as long as it is that we're going to be another, but maybe it won't because maybe all the information submitted everywhere. And like, it's just the cloud stuff. I I don't know. But like, my worry is that, uh, they get too focused on that stuff again and the platform and all that stuff suffers in the meantime, waiting for the deal to, to, to go through, you know, that's, that's my ultimate concern. Yeah. yeah I mean, I wrote an art- a whole editorial about that. Like this, this idea that they're, they're being too distracted by it. And you know, there's things that might slip through the cracks if they aren't careful, that kind of stuff. But I want to believe that Microsoft's, is on the ball and i guess we just have to wait and see bro yeah we have a super chat here from vinster x11 thoughts on xbox bringing back viva pinata i mean i wouldn't be against it i mean why not yeah, viva pinata was cool. cool i mean I, you probably would have to find somebody else to do it i don't think rare is interested in doing viva pinata they're very much not. they're doing sea of thieves and everwild so you'd have to find somebody else and maybe yeah. you know xbox should have found somebody else by now like, that's the other thing. Like, you talk about Killer Instinct. Somebody mentioned Killer Instinct earlier. Like, there should have been a Killer Instinct in development. If they're not, that's very disappointing. Like, I understand, like, you know, devs are... A lot of fighting devs are, are, are tied up with stuff. But, like, come on. Like, you, sh- you could have been able to... You should have been able to find one. Just like even yeah. Banjo. For all my Banjo bros. Right? Banjo. How do you have a Banjo go to, to the Switch as a character in super smash brothers ultimate and not sort of also at least grow from that in a way of having a banjo game at some point to go along with all that. Like that's years ago. It's like, how do you not have a banjo remake in development by somebody? You know what I mean? Fallout. (laughs) Fallout, bro. That too. Uh. At this point, like there's this question marks where I'm just like, you should be doing more. You have th- more of these things that you can do. It's like, I, I personally don't, I don't care about Banjo, but like a lot of the fans of, of, of on the platform would love a Banjo thing. Like, why hasn't it been done yet? Like same thing with killer instinct. Look at, look at all the fighting games. Like, this is like the year of the fighter. You have uh, street fighter six coming really soon. And people are stoked about it. You have mortal Kombat one, trailer is incredible trending all like trending all day on twitter trending number one on youtube right it's gonna be a massive game coming out in september uh you got a a tekken 8 like you have this like fighting game like not i wouldn't say you know like resurgence but dude where's killer instinct why isn't there why isn't the why isn't there a new killer instinct in development i mean i know special nick says there is and maybe there is but what the hell (laughs) like i don't know like you have all this money use some of it to, to 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 grab some games based off the ip like just says you really going to let fall fallout like you're sitting on fallout and is it possible we won't see anything until 2030 i mean i know they have fallout 4 like 4k 60 uh version coming soon probably to tie it into the tv show and stuff but there should be a new fallout game i mean fall is too big of a franchise to sit on that long it, yeah. assuming even it comes out in 2030 that's what 15 years in between games it's way too long there's this like you're not wrong bro yeah you're i mean wrong. you let the first party do what the first party wants you let bethesda do what they want but it's like some of these things it's like the published the, the, the publishing team needs to go out there and i think make more deals not necessarily get like third party exclusives i know some p- people talk about that although it would be nice to like have the as branding but to to make exclusive games based off of the bigger ips that xbox has that they're just sitting on and they're just not doing it for whatever different reasons i don't know um yep biggity says uh jez what game would you play over warcraft and top five games ever you and rand well top five games ever would probably have to be a uh a topic show for um like patreon xbox 2 ultimate because i just can't think top five games ever right off the top of my head right now yeah i actually did 
I actually did top 10 games ever for uh, GQ. Did oh, that's that? right. You did. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Uh, so like a few. Damn, dude. It was like a year ago almost. Well, it's about it's about nine months ago, something like that. GQ reached out to me and said, we're putting together a top, I think top 100 games of all time. And um, basically we're asking content creators, journalists, game devs to list their top 10 games. And then we'll sort of tally up what everyone says. And then we'll use that to create the top 100 games of all time list. You know, not the, the best methodology I've ever seen. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, I'll do that. Um, and I think, like, I actually wrote my top 10 games down. World of Warcraft was my top 10, my number one. What would you play like, over it? Would you play any game over World of Warcraft? Probably no. not, huh? No, uh, probably not. Well, so what was your list? Um, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but it was like Dra Dragon Age was there, Prey was there, um, World of Warcraft was there. I think Monster Hunter World was there as well. Mm. Um, and I think, was Overwatch there, maybe? Yeah. A lot of Blizzard stuff. Oh, I'm, I'm surprised because you're not a Blizzard fanboy. Uh, Radimus <laughs> Cisco says, uh, do you guys saw that the member of parliament talking about the possibility of the FTC influencing them? He even responded to the CMA reps at one point, quote, that's assuming the decision was correct. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think I, that was part of the parliamentary committee hearing. Yeah. Mm. Angry Hippie says the UK doesn't want to regulate because they need the tax money for the coronation quitch, whatever that is. Uh, the, the coronation. Well, the thing is, the royals pay for themselves. I always, I always hear, hear this like, "Oh my God, they cost so much money," but they, they're kind of bringing so much money via taxes that it, it doesn't matter. So, uh, um, Spinner says, "Did you see the Xbox showcase fake list? Scalebound Shadow Drop, baby." No, I haven't seen any. I saw the PlayStation fake list. I have not seen an Xbox Showcase fake list. Where's this? I've seen a bunch of where's fake this, lists. Where's this Xbox Showcase fake list at, bro? I don't know. They're all over Twitter. Someone, know, someone DM them. me this this fake Xbox Showcase list because I like to see them just to take a look at it. Uh, and I haven't seen one yet. Uh, Achievement oh, there's, says there's loads out there. Oh, I haven't seen any of them. Usually, oh, we send... we just we got a little bit of break a couple of breaking Ooh. news stories during the show okay do you want to do you want to read the super chats I'll first, get, yeah just... uh, chieftain says they close with banjo i'm calling it well okay fair enough <laughs> Maybe. closing 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 with banjo so what's the breaking news what's the breaking news um well first of all uh clippy b said he's trying to get the rights back to lawbreakers to revive it okay um, he said he's he's got a friend who runs a studio who's going to pick it up, so that's interesting. Interesting. Second of all, three four three just announced Infection is returning on June twentieth to Halo. Yeah, Infinite. I knew I knew Infection I was coming. I I, I had heard I about Infection that last is. year. It's that mo it's the zombie mode essentially. Eh? It's How does that work? Zombie. So like one person starts off as a zombie and they have like an energy sword. And like usually they run really fast, they can jump really high, and everybody else in the game's got to like hide. And oh, you know, the so when weird. the zombie kills somebody with the sword, that other person becomes a zombie. Rinse and repeat. Okay, and so whoever's left last is the winner. Yeah, essentially. That's uh, your battle royale, mode, bro. I know. So we, I a whole bunch of people DM <laughs> me, uh, Fuzzy Belvedere, Kuro, and Idle Sloth the, the the list, and holy cow, is this? It's 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 Angle that's taken off a screenshot of a of someone's monitor, right? And it has like confidentials like across the entire middle diagonally. So you know it's legit cuz it says confidential. <laughs> um, uh let's 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 hear it then. All right, let's, so let's hear this super We got list. we got avowed and it says Obsidian Entertainment exclusive. We have Starfield, but that's the game studio's exclusive. Uh, even though Starfield has its own direct afterwards, but whatever. We have Fable from Playground Games exclusive. State of the K3 oh. Undead Labs exclusive. Damn, we're getting the Elusive 5 right away, huh? Hollow Knight Silk Song from T Team Team Cherry timed exclusive. Well, you already know that's wrong right there. <laughs> it's already announced for all these other platforms. It's coming to Game Pass though. <laughs> Bro, um, why didn't they even try? <laughs> why do you even try with this? Like uh, at least try to be realistic like Overdose from Kojima exclusive. Everwild from Rare exclusive. Oh man, we're Quake from id Software exclusive. 
Hellblade 2 Ninja Theory exclusive, Scalebound from Platinum Games, exclusive Shadow Drop. So <laughs> it'd be dropping Dude, during the I, show. I, I, Scalebound cracks me up, man. It's like the game that won't die. I know, right? <laughs> people, people always bring it up. Like, what is it, chat? Chat, I need people in chat to explain to me. What is it about Scalebound that keeps keeps it in public consciousness? Is it is it just the meme? Is it just for the lols? Or do people actually want to see this thing? Oh, he actually spelled Silk Song wrong. He spelled it Slick Song. Slick Song. He spelled it oh, S L I K. But Rand, Rand, Rand. Maybe what? maybe it's not spelled wrong. Maybe maybe it's Silk Song that's multi-platform, oh, and Slick Song and is s- Slick. S- <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what else we got here? Uh. Contraband from Avalanche, exclusive. Killer Instinct from Rare and Bandai Namco, exclusive. Hey, that's kind of what I remember when you sort of said that could be in development at Bando all those years ago. Mm-hmm. Wolfenstein 3 from Bethesda Softworks, exclusive. I don't know why that wouldn't mm-hmm. say uh, Machine Games, but whatever. Forza Motorsport, Playground Games. Excuse me? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Forza- oh, this- this, this this list has a lot of I know, that. right? Dude. Forza Motorsport from, from Playground Games exclusive. And then you have Midnight TBA exclusive. They don't even have they didn't even put a developer in here. Then Fallout New Vegas 2 from Obsidian exclusive. Then Halo Tatanka in quotes from Certain Affinity exclusive Shadow Drop. So uh, they so so they don't even know the name of Tatanka. Uh, uh, yeah, it's just it's just Tatanka. <laughs> then Halo Three Anniversary from Three Four Three exclusive, mm-hmm. and then Cyberpunk Twenty Seventy Seven DLC, which already has a name, but the name's not here, from CD <laughs> Projekt Red, and it says three month timed exclusive. <laughs> Isn't that already announced? Yes. Uh... Woo. This is a great list. This yeah, is an interesting. Thank, list. Thanks for the laugh, guys. I appreciate it. Cause God, did anybody? Does any? Did anybody think like this? This list was real. I mean, seriously. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I, I kind of like this list. I mean, it's 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 funny. It's funny. Maybe maybe somebody make a YouTube video going over the list. Ha- <laughs> Hollow Knight slick song. <laughs> slick song. Slick song. <laughs> I, I wanna I wanna read read some of these comments about Scalbone. I thought Sky Eric Eric Galash says, I thought Scalbone looked great, but I'm not holding my breath for it coming back. I was not Michael Mitretsky says I wasn't interested in Scalbone, but I was and I was okay with it being cancelled. Maybe it's just the meme. Pasha Play says the mental scars from Scalbone cancellation have never healed. Wow, that's dramatic. Uh Mutai Forever says Scalbone was one of the reasons I was excited about the Xbox generation. It's interesting. I might like. I might like. I might put a thread on Twitter and write an article about it because I think it's. I think it's quite funny. I know. I know that like Microsoft finds it kind of annoying. Oh, I'm sure. I know <laughs> Phil finds it annoying. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna write it anyway. I've had quite. I've, had, I've actually die. had quite a few conversations with Phil about Scalebound over the years. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's funny because nobody really knew what it was like, but everyone kind of was like the idea of it maybe i don't know i like platinum games really make some real real bangers you know they, they are capable of greatness you know when they're when they're really you know firing on all cylinders but they're also capable of absolute spectacularly bad stuff so you know it doesn't there was never a guarantee that game was going to be any good and the fact that they canceled it is kind of a hint right yeah, like this is Microsoft who didn't even cancel Redfall. <laughs> so <laughs> how bad was Scalebound? Oh, yeah, man. they did cancel Scalebound and Fable Legends, but Redfall yeah. came out. How bad was? I actually played Fable Legends. It wasn't bad at all. I think they it were just worried survived. about. Probably not. No, I don't think a lot. The only like four v one game that ever survived was Dead by Daylight, which I believe is. Uh, super massive games is making like a single player game based on that universe. Uh, I think it was Dude, just... I can't. I know people who are obsessed with that game. Yeah. I've tried multiple times to get but into that's it. Like the, like, I, I can't get into that's like game. the only 4v1 game that survived. Like, remember when 4v1 was this thing? The like beginning of the Xbox One gen, Fable Legends, mm-hmm. and Evolve, and all these other games. And yeah, I, th- I think it was it was it was Left 4 Dead because like Left 4 Dead had this 
Left 4 Dead had the versus mode, right? Where you could like players that some sometimes you spawned as the tank. Yeah, but it wasn't four v one. It was like yeah, it, it wasn't four v one. But when you were the tank, it was kind of that experience. You are like the the scary, nasty dude trying to screw over the whole group, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think they were evolved definitely was like, yeah, we could take the tank experience from Left 4 Dead and make a whole game out of it. And they were like, well, actually, no, you couldn't. Mm. <laughs> and then, like, I think a lot of devs were just like, this just doesn't work. But Dead by Daylight, like, I don't, it's, it's crazy how popular that game is. I've tried to get into it a few times, but it just frustrates the hell out of me. What I'm playing is like, I'm playing, I've tried, I got, see, this is, this is proof that crossovers work. I got Dead by Daylight because of the Silent Hill crossover. I wanted to play as Pyramid Head. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I've always wanted to play as Pyramid Head. That's awesome. I will play as Pyramid Head. And like, yeah, I, I get that I'm a complete noob and the people that play it are like probably, you know, hardcore Dead by Daylight people. But the dude was just like strafing around me and I just felt like a moron. I was like, I, I literally can't grab this guy. Like, I moved too slow. And I just got too frustrated and then uninstalled it and never played it again. Yeah, <laughs> skill issue maybe, but <laughs> we have a we have a super chat here from Special Nick of Xbox Era. <gasps> Special Nick, he's upset wow. with you, Jez. He's really upset with you. Oh great! He says, right. Jez, mate, don't even try and claim the Gears Collection when it comes. Not cool. <laughs> what, what do you mean? I never said it was coming. I think it's because Idle Idle Sloth put out a tweet that says you're backtracking on the Gears collection. <laughs> no, I'm really not. I have no idea if that thing's real. I just think if if it was real, it makes sense. You know. Yeah, but Nick is trying sense. to say Nick is like you can't if it does come out, you can't say see I told you so. I you know because. Well, I'm just saying it didn't exist when he said it exists, man. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah. All right. <laughs> not cool he says uh, not cool luke says uh jez two years ago rumors about 10 cent buying take two is it still on the table uh approving fe approving fields with no concessions feels like a uh, you owe me one to microsoft what was the question basically is take two still for sale with 10 cent like because there's those you know i mean oh, there's 10 cent I, take I two don't know. rumors I and stuff there's been rumors about Take Two looking for a buyer for a really long time, and I think a lot of these publishers are kind of like, you know, wh where do we go from here? You know, the, we we've we sort of, you know, gotten as many gamers as we can. Like, how can we possibly grow at this point? You know, I think there's there is that a lot of publishers are sort of faced with that question, and when you are a publicly traded company, and it's kind of like, well. Our, 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 you know, efforts to bring a return for investors. Either they sort of, you know, uh, we try and get our better operating margins and increase dividends, or we look for a buyer, you know, and who who will pay above the share price, like Microsoft is paying orders of magnitude above the share price for Activision Blizzard, which is, you know, it makes it a really great deal for shareholders. Which is why ninety seven percent of them voted in favor of it, right? So, like, if I'm if I'm Take Two Interactive, and it's just like, yeah, I, like Gears of War, Gears, Gears of War, Grand Theft Auto Six, which we got a little bit of news about this week potentially. Um, that game can be as amazing as hell, but the console market ain't getting any bigger. You know, you got more people than ever playing on Switch, and more play, people playing on mobile. So, how big realistically can you make that game? You know, it's it's going to be huge, but like investors, that huge ain't enough for investors. They want to see like crazy operating margins so they can have like amazing dividends and stuff like that you get you get companies that are like the biggest company in their in their field and they still don't have a particularly great share price because they're the the business they operate in it's just the operating margins just aren't that great you know for whatever reason yeah but the you know it could go either way but it's, uh, it's like who who could buy take two there aren't many companies big enough to buy take two yeah but i mean straw selnick he's he's backing up xbox though uh, saying it's good for the industry, that uh, maybe he's angling for an acquisition. Yeah, maybe, that cloud <laughs> gaming isn't a isn't a new distribution model. It's like just part of the existing one or whatever he said. But he also said mid gen upgrades are likely, Jez, um, as well. He he was asked about this during their financial reports because mm. it sort of came like you know the, everybody does their quarterly reports, 
And a couple things that came out from this was that Take Two thinks mid gen console refreshes are likely. And we know from Tom Henderson the PS5 Pro is a thing that is supposed to come uh, next year, end of next year. Uh, when asked about it, he said, quote, we probably will. And they did not affect the business very much talking about, um, like, you know, the Xbox one X and the PS4 pro, I think Mm. he's, he asked, he was asked if we can expect to see updated versions of the PS5 and Xbox series X and S and whether hardware refreshes in the last gen had much of an impact on the company's business. And he said, we probably will. And they did not affect the business very much. Mm. Now it's interesting because remember when we talked about this before, when Tom had leaked the PS5 Pro and we had a discussion on the show about do we want to see mid-gen refreshes? And we ran a poll and the poll was very much saying, no, I don't want a mid-gen refresh. That the mm. gen just started and all this stuff. But since then, we've seen a lot of games kind of release in a poor state. Uh, you know, Redfall not launching at 30, not launching at 60 FPS. Star Wars just being very bad in performance mode. Uh, and, a, and a couple other games just kind of, you know, Plague's Tale taking seven months to get a 60 FPS. Gotham Knights still a 30. And, and these are kind of like next-gen only games or current-gen only games. And we've seen Richard Ledbetter from Digital Foundry talk about like, we might see the return of 30 frames because developers might optimize more for visual uh, quality rather than performance. And, and even though I said, give me, give me a, give me a new Xbox next year because I play on the system every day, I'll take, I'll take a better system, like 100%. I wonder if a lot of people are, when these systems come out in a year or two, if their mind shift will be, mind, they're the way they think, their, their minds will be different about the idea of needing um, mid-gen upgrades so the games mm. run better, uh, you know, look better, maybe ray tracing performs better on there, right? I, I think I think that that's possibility that might be a thing where it's like you're starting to get to some of these games and it's like man, I, like Star Wars for example. I don't know how they're. I know they say they they keep on patching it and they say performance improves, but like I don't know how they'll ever improve Star Wars, uh, performance mode. And mm. and that that even runs at like 892 like P on Series X where it's like maybe we do need these mid gen consoles or something. I think the pro the problem is that like because because of the because of AI and because of server technology and some of this stuff, there's like GP technology in the chip space is progressing faster than it has historically. So you get PC you get PCs that are just monstrously more powerful than the average, and then you get developers who who want to make their games look as be- as good as possible. And you get like all the bottlenecks, you know, like mechanical hard drives, for example. And one of the big bottlenecks right now is the fact that a lot of a lot of people with gaming PCs, they they you know they they focus on they focus on the graphics card and the and the CPU, and then they forget they've got they've still got a mecha- they're running their games off a mechanical hard drive, and then they wonder why like they get rubber banding and texture streaming is really bad and stuff like that. Um, you know, uh, there's this whole and because of the the rise of PC gaming, and because of how much how much of an emphasis, P- you know, things have fallen on PC gaming in recent years, it's kind of getting to the point now where it's like, um, the consoles aren't being upgraded fast enough, you know, to keep in line with the pace of technology. You know, you get you get Samsung. I, I said this before. You get Samsung and Apple releasing a thousand dollar phone every year, and people are totally cool with it. But you talk about doing that with the console, and people freak out, and I don't get it, especially as someone who games a lot. You know, at least if they continue to support the past gen consoles with thirty FPS versions or whatever, I don't see it like it should be a problem. But I don't know. I think the 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 a lot of the people here who said like we shouldn't have mid gen consoles, you know, um, uh, do a different poll. You know, if PlayStation does a mid-gen console and Xbox doesn't, I guarantee you will be pissed off about that. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> yeah, so, 100%. And so I'll, if PlayStation's doing it, Xbox has to do it. And if Xbox is doing it, then PlayStation has to do it. And, like, both of them are probably sitting there thinking, we can make a stack of money with this. So, yeah. I'm, I'm in favor. You know, I'm in favor of it. 
I think most core gamers. Are probably, I think people will people with be. the money. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I mean, I play. That's the system I play. In. Yeah, give me the better system. You know. Um, I think what if I think what Microsoft and well, Microsoft and Sony probably hate each other these days. But I think what would be a perfect a perfect universe would be if Microsoft and Sony had better trading options. So like I upgrade my phone maybe once every two or three years because Samsung's trading program is incredible. I traded in my Galaxy Fold 2 for uh, S23 Ultra and that gave me $800 off the price. You know, if Microsoft had a trading program where they were like, we'll take your Xbox Series X and, you know, we'll give you 50% of the cost towards a mid-gen upgrade, I think that that would ease the burden a lot and it would allow them to iterate more quickly, you know. And you know, it's not like Microsoft can't repurpose that hardware either. They could take those Xbox Series X chips, slap them in a server and use the use the bandwidth for Azure or something, you know. So I think that would be the ideal scenario. I think f- smartphones have like these great trading programs. I know Apple does as well. They do that Apple Plus or whatever it's called, I don't know. But yeah, I don't know. Um but also, it sounds like potentially Grand Theft Auto 6 might come out next fiscal year, which for them is April 2024 to March 2025. Because they said, um, looking at fiscal 2025, it is a highly anticipated year for our company. For the last several years, we have been preparing our business to release an incredibly robust pipeline of projects that we believe will take our company even greater levels of success. And fiscal 2025, we expect to enter this new era by launching several groundbreaking titles that we believe will set the new standards in our industry and enable us to achieve over 8 billion in net bookings and over a billion in adjusted operating cash flow. I mean, that's got to be Grand Theft Auto 6, right? <coughs> yes, it has yeah, to be. It, ha- it, it has absolutely to be. has to be. And I, I do see a lot of PlayStation fans thinking that PlayStation Grand Theft Auto 6 will be at the PlayStation show and that it's going to be a timed exclusive for PlayStation. Mm, what do you think? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think that's the amount of money it would take to get any form of any form of Grand Theft Auto exclusivity would probably not be worth it. Uh, but, I mean, pfft. what would what would Take Two ask for for just say six months of exclusivity for Grand Theft Auto? A billion dollars? Mm, yeah, I mean, more. It could be worth it to PlayStation. I mean, maybe. Wouldn't that be something? It'd be it'd be it'd be a devastating mindshare blow for Xbox. Yeah, dude, you better not will that into existence. Do you know? Is this true? Is this something that you know of? Is this one of the things that the PlayStation showcase? Grand no, Theft Auto I Six. Don't, I don't know. I don't know a damn thing about Rockstar. You know, I don't know anything. They're pretty good at keeping a lid on things generally, apart from when they their servers get hacked and the whole build leaks. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I don't know anything about that game. Yeah. Uh... Senju says, I think the priority should be making the next console easier to develop for, not just increase power. We've already seen how that turned out. Fair enough. Well, it's, there's, there's no issue with developing for the console. The issue is like the PC market. You can't, you can't like, that can make the console as easy to develop for as, as you want. But the issue is like the fact that the PlayStation architecture is going to be different. The PC architecture is going to be different as well. I think like the fact that um, the PlayStation has like you know a really fast SSD kind of took took Microsoft by surprise, and now like a lot of a lot of the techniques developed third party developers are using probably rely on having the you know the maximum speed M2 NVMe drive, you know, which is why I think a lot of these games have issues on PC because not everyone has this kind of drive, and I think like some some games run into real issues when they're running off a slower SSD, like um. You know, I was running uh I was running Diablo four and Overwatch two off an SD card. And this is this is an extreme example, by the way. This is an extreme example. Obviously I'm not saying the Xbox is as slow as an SD card. But I was running I was running these games off an SD card and it just gave me loads of rubber banding because the, the texture streaming of the world just couldn't keep up with the speed that the SD card had. So I had to like literally give in and wipe steam os completely off my steam deck and use the internal ssd which is way faster than the sd card you know so it, the, so these games will run like the cpu is good enough to run overwatch and the gpu is good enough to run it um but the the ssd became the bottleneck then so 
the issue with hardware is always that there's just so much of it out there, so many different types. I think developers should just start saying, look, our game requires NVMe <laughs> SSD. You can't run this off a mechanical hard drive. Let, let that die, please. They're not even expensive. But I suppose if you don't have a motherboard for it, then it could be expensive, but I don't know. Uh, Joaquin Bresch says, hey, gents, if the Persona r- rumors turn out to be true, then Sega really is Xbox only Xbox's only Japanese friend. Makes you wonder about that Super Game project. Oh, the Sonic. Oh, yeah. Sega's so-called Super Game. Yeah, the Super which is Game. Powered, powered by Azure. Yeah. And targeting what like if a that? 2026 game release or something. What if that, right, is a Sonic MMO Ugh. where you can sort of make your own furry character? It's like the ultimate furry So instead MMO. of a Super Game, it's a Super Fail? <laughs> Dude, you have no idea how big that game would be. <laughs> it Probably. wouldn't be big. Nobody would care. Dude, don't underestimate the furry community. I know some of you are in here right now. Yeah. Probably, um, I bet Colt's secretly a furry. You think so? Yeah, I just I just get that vibe from Colt that he's a furry. Mm. Well, if you guys are enjoying the show, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, let's transition to Patreon questions, guys, shall we? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Patreon questions. So this is, uh, you know, one of the tiers you get is to ask questions. We'll read them off at the end of every show, so you can always easily find your questions, uh, because we we will answer them. Patreon. dot com slash xb two. Let me just load it up, and I'll probably there'll probably be like twenty five twenty five questions here. Hope we got some we got some bangers. Let's see. We have um, 24, it looks like. Nice. Or at least 24 comments. So, all right. Let's 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 begin. We have uh, Silas says, Merry Friday. I love to know what a week in the life of the Xbox 2 podcast is. For example, who, how do you handle business sponsors? Who manages a Patreon? Do you have weekly visiting sessions where you talk about long-term goals? Rand, what is the process like to get your interview questions or for Jez's approval? <laughs> Since Jez is a big-time editor, do you have to deal with someone on his team for approval? The day of the podcast, what is show prep like? Do you share a show sheet? Vocal exercises to prepare for, for our podcast. I love the content you provide. I like to get a peek behind the curtain, learn how the <laughs> sausage is made. All right, we'll go through this one by one. How do you handle business sponsors? Usually, we do it one by one. <laughs> well, well we, we, really quickly. We do nothing. Well, here's the thing. How do you <laughs> handle so business and sponsors? Uh, lately, let you late in the past, Jez did. Lately, it's all been on me. Uh, yeah, I, like it's easy, it's it's complicated because like I've got full time employment, so like because of the Patreon and stuff i have to like submit a separate tax return for that money on top of the money that i earn that i automatically pay money to the government well, not for. this so, year eh? not this year no. because patreon's under my name now yeah but i still i still have to submit a tax return for last year for and, last year but, but we we only we yeah, only had it for a few, few months last year yeah but you have to submit a tax return anyway and yes. I still have to submit a tax return for last year. So, but you, it's it's potentially simpler for Rand to sort that stuff out because he has to submit a tax return anyway. And my tax return is more complicated because I have to yeah. I have to do two so, separate ones. Yeah, normally Jez handled the Manscaped stuff and I handle some of the other ones. Who manages the Patreon? Jez. Jez made the Patreon without even talking to me. He has access to the Patreon. <laughs> he runs the Patreon. So that's him. Yeah, Dude. one of one of the issues too with Patreon, I just want to let people know, is that we we can only have one login to the Patreon. So like all the tweet, all the posts and stuff made on Patreon is generally me, and that's purely because of Patreon won't let two people log in unless you're a huge Patreon. If you're yeah. a massive Patreon, like if you're kind of funny like, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're a huge Patreon, there's Patreon for teams, which means we could both log in. But right now, only I can log in because we're just a small yep. Patreon. Guy. Um. Do you have weekly visiting sessions where you talk about long-term goals? Never. Nope. I don't think we've ever had something like that. No. No. Nope. Uh, Rand, what is the process like to get interview questions for Jez approved? Um, it can be tricky sometimes. Uh, he has <laughs> he has somebody that I need to go through uh, to see if it's okay. Uh, for yeah, right. Because he's, he's such a bigwig now. Uh, the day of the podcast. Okay, so this is what it's like, right? 
Uh, I'll usually set up the show an hour beforehand. That's why you see the tweet. Like, hey, join us in an hour because that's when I set it up. And then about uh, 30 minutes after that, so like 1.30 my time, I kind of, I have like things bookmarked on my Twitter that I see. And I'm like, okay, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about this. And I have a, we have a secret section in Xbox 2 Discord uh, that where I put like notes, be like, okay, ABK, like kind of just small notes to keep my mind. Be like, okay, we'll be talking about. Uh, and so I usually, so I'll do that at like 1.30. So like 45 minutes before the show starts. And then I'll hop into the Discord at like 1.45. And then normally in the past, Jez would dro- drop in at like 2.10, like five minutes before the show would start, and he would have audio <laughs> problems. <laughs> but lately, Jez has been good about joining right when I join, about like 1.45. And if we have his audio issues, we work it out. And then we'll talk about some stuff, usually the leaks that Jez has heard or some of the things we get like insider, you know, his insider information. So when Jez says like he knows the four games that our Xbox has, I also know those too. Uh, cause Jez, Jez shares information like that. You know what I mean? Um, mm, I don't, mm, sometimes, sometimes, but not all the time, but sometimes, uh, and we'll, we'll just <clears throat> some talk about some stuff and then we'll start, we'll, 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 you know, stream, stream the YouTube, start the show, get the music rolling and then begin. And then after that, it is we usually we'll say, we'll talk about something after the show. Jez is usually pretty tired and he goes to bed and then I download the show and send it to Jez to put it up on audio for the next day. Yep. That's essentially how it works. Um, but yeah, very little organization. Weekly, I was very impressed when, when I did um, sessions though, to think about goals. Yeah. We didn't, have, we didn't have any goals. Did, um, we had no goals no, when we started this. It was just like, there's, there's no goals. So this, this is why I just made the Patreon without Ron's permission, because I knew like, you if we it wasn't permission. It. it was like, you didn't even ask me for input. You just did it. I was just like, yeah. Cause I was like, well, if we talk about it, you'll, you'll overthink everything and nothing will get done. So I was just like, yeah, screw it. I'll just do it. And then yeah. I'll deal with Rand afterwards. <laughs> yeah. That's part of the reasons why I love doing the show. Cause it's not like a job. And it's never like, oh, we have goals for it. I mean, sure, we want more people to listen to it, but it's honestly just a conversation between two friends that you guys can all listen to. Because I, yeah, you know, I often get these like emails like improve the SEO of your yep. podcast and, and stuff like that. And I'm just like, oh, I can't be bothered with any of that. Like, Let's oh, just see what happens. clip some stuff and put them on TikTok or YouTube shorts. I'm like, nah, like, nah, nah. Uh, I can't be bothered. Like, no. whatever. It's, no. it's just got, it's got to be fun. It's, a, it's a hobby. You know, and I think like when things get too corporate and too silly and and you take it too seriously, I think something gets lost. You know, there's there's something about there's something about the rawness of everything we do that makes it more fun and not treating it like a job. And I really need it to not feel like a job so I can feel like I actually have something beyond my job in my life. But yeah. I love doing the show, man. Yeah. It's fun. Me too. Uh, oh my God, Turtle seventy three says, "Hey guys, hope you had a great week. Keep those rose tinted glasses on if you want." I'm on the phone to Big Philly Spencer right now, and he's stressing because he forgot to plan the Xbox showcase. He needs to give the CGI team two to four IPs for to make trailers for. I guess the games will be greenlit too, and you know that team that would be perfect to make a new one. Yeah, they're making it, so don't worry about the detail. What IPs would you like to see Xbox bring back, no matter who owns them? I said the saboteur and death spank. Hope you had both had a great weekend. Oh geez, okay. Well, no matter who owns them, yeah, so like that's... Microsoft, Microsoft's cut a deal See, and bought an IP. I I I, I, I think we kind of have to like cut that part out because we could be here all day thinking about like oh no matter who owns them, I think it's got to be like IPs that Xbox are in control of that they could do. You know what I mean? Because it could be like um, I don't know, like Starcraft three. Because there, who knows if there's a StarCraft in development. Let's have Xbox do that. You know what I mean? Oh, that's literally what I was thinking of. Starcraft right? Three. Uh, or some other huge franchises that have kind of gone by the wayside. Like, you know, we know Splinter Cell is a thing, but I would have said Splinter Cell. So I had to keep it, like, structured to just things Xbox could make to make it more realistic. So what would I uh, green light? Well, like, if I'm part of the business, see, there's there's, like rand and what rand wants but if i'm big philly spence and i need to think about what's good for the brand i'd probably be like all right we got a banjo game coming 
we have we have a killer instinct game coming um we have we're we're doing one versus 100 bringing that back in in some form or format and yeah th- th- those would be the three that I would probably make sure because I you know what do you think Jez? Oh, uh, f- oh tough. wait hold on, hold on this also includes Bethesda uh a Fallout a Fallout uh CGI thing for f- some Fallout game yeah yeah I'd have Hexen make uh, I'd have id software make a new Hexen game I think that I think that's going to happen eventually anyway personally um but I'd have them make a new Hexen game I'd have uh Arcane's A team make oh. a new Deus Ex <laughs> you'd, ha- you'd have maybe uh, not now. <laughs> you'd have uh, Arcane Austin make Deus Ex <clears throat> uh no no <laughs> but um, they don't they don't own uh, Deus, Deus Ex you mean you'd want them to make Shadowrun oh uh, are we not do? oh yeah you said we're not doing cause we'd be I mean I, I guess you yeah you, you, so you'd be you'd be Deus well, Ex I was, I, was pick, I was picking Hexen cause he's Activision right right right, right. yeah yeah okay um, fair enough um I'd obviously pick Starcraft 3 but I'd also like to see I would really I'm curious man what would what would it look like if CD Projekt Red made a Warcraft action RPG ooh ooh interesting where you where you play as like I don't know uh, maybe maybe it's set during Warcraft 3 maybe you play as a paladin or something during the you know the the whole zombie stuff going down with the with the Lich King, I think that'd be pretty cool. Like a side story, something that people didn't hear. There's a load of books that deal with like con- stuff that was happening around the events of Warcraft Three, but not actually in the game. So you can make a whole ass game about that. I'd love to see a photo realistic Warcraft. That'd be awesome. <clears throat> I was thinking, you know, since you said like anybody, I'd be like, well, you know what? Let's uh, I'd I'd, I'd uh, get an exclusive uh, uh, Killzone. We're bringing back Killzone, despite PlayStation owning it. Because you said anybody, <laughs> and Killzone's That's dead wild. right now. You know. Uh, mm. just, just to have it. So, uh, Raj, he says on the Xbox two ultimate Xbox show showcase fantasy draft, neither one of you mentioned avowed as being there as a likely 2024 game. It's got to be shown next month. Don't you think? Well, sure. But like the rules for that fantasy draft were six first party or platform announcements and four third party things. So 10 games out of potential 30. And Avowed, I came up with five games and one platform announcement and Jez came up with six. That's not to say that we, I think we both think Avowed will be there because we both yeah, think it's I a think 20, 24 there. game. Don't read too much into the fact that we didn't have it in the fantasy draft. Yeah, um, the fantasy draft was literally just a fantasy well, draft. Well, it wasn't a fantasy. I tried to keep in mind realistic as possible, which is, you know, the whole point. But also, yeah, there's a little bit of fantasy to it, a, a little bit, but. Um, but yeah, no, we both, we both think it's there. Uh, Jay Foley says, happy Friday. Do you guys believe Xbox could acquire exclusive rights to a big game title from EA, like Mass Effect, Dead Space, Star Wars, or even Dragon Age to help in their fight against PlayStation exclusives? I know back in the day, Mass Effect was supposed to be an Xbox exclusive. Well, it was because Xbox funded that game. It wasn't until EA bought, (laughs) EA bought, uh, Bioware Uh, and what was the other studio that there uh, was Bioware (coughs) and... And uh, mm. the team that did Mercenaries. Oh, Pandemic. Pandemic. Yeah, Pandemic. And, Awkward name. Yeah, no. Mass, <laughs> yeah. And EA got the Mass Effect IP because uh, I think Xbox let Ma- like Bioware own the IP in exchange for doing it. So yeah, it was always supposed to be an exclusive, but it, like EA came in and snatched it up. But no, I mean, EA doesn't really do exclusives. At, at best, you'd have marketing deals. I think does Xbox have the marketing deal for Star Wars? Maybe I think in the the commercial with um, Mark Hamill, I think he was using an Xbox controller because I, I believe PlayStation cropped that out of their video. But That's if they hilarious. if they did have marketing, they it wasn't really good for it or really good. So at at most you'd have some sort of marketing deal for these games. Um, mm. Yeah, no, I don't I don't see EA do, EA doing exclusives. And I don't. I, you 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 would agree with that, right? Yeah, I agree. I I I think a lot of people are hungry for Microsoft to do third party exclusive, just because Sony's been doing so many. 
but I still don't know if that's on the docket for Microsoft philosophically, but I really think they should reconsider personally. But yeah. we'll see. Um, we have Nate Miller says, Happy Friday. What games do you play the most regularly? What's your rotation typically? Mine is Fortnite, Overwatch 2, MLB The Show, and a single-player experience. I find this a great way to balance playing casual or service-based games with keeping up sort of with new game releases. Uh, well, mine is basically whatever game I'm currently playing. I play one game at a time most of most of the time. I haven't. There isn't a multiplayer game I'm cycling. Right? There used to be. Hey, I'm playing PUBG, or I'm playing Call of Duty, Warzone. But that hasn't happened in a while. So it's basically I'm playing Star Wars Jedi Survivor right now, and that's all I'm playing until I'm done. And then I'll play whatever's next, like Last Case of Benedict Fox or Planet of Lana. Right? Those are two games I want to play soon. And then when those done, I'll play another one. I'm I play one game at a time. And if there's a multiplayer game, you can maybe add that in. But Jazz, you're you're different. You're playing all over the place. Yeah, I just play random games, whatever takes me fancy. Like I played, I played um, uh, Call of the Lamb like religiously for a couple of days, and then just stopped again. <laughs> so like I just play stuff completely randomly. But right now I'm sort of. I'm led by the stuff that I need to review. So right now I'm, I'm reviewing a certain massive game that's coming out Ooh, in the near future. Interesting. I wonder, um, what, wonder what game that could be. Yeah, I wonder what game that could be indeed. So that's sort of taken up all of my time. But when I'm <clears throat> when I'm not reviewing games, I've been re- reviewing games a lot more recently because I've had some really great feedback from people. And some people were like, what, how come you didn't review any games recently? So I was just kind of like, wow, people actually like my reviews. Maybe I should you know, actually write some reviews maybe and you gotta um, the, strike the fear in the god of these publishers who are like oh we can ignore jess he doesn't review games anymore dun 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 <laughs> yeah i guess i guess so um but yeah it's sort of where we're at with some of that stuff um in any case i uh, but when i'm not reviewing any games i just play i just sort of rotate between over i I'm basically just play overwatch and then a single player game. I always try and get in my dailies in Overwatch because I want the stuff from the battle pass. And um I just like playing Overwatch because it's kind of mindless to me now. You know, uh, it's a great way to switch my brain off. And then I play Warcraft, World of Warcraft when the new season's up. Because I'm in I'm in a super casual guild that just does the raid and then once they've killed the last boss they just stop until the next season and that really suits me with my lifestyle so i usually play through the 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 warcraft season and then stop and uh, then i just play random single player games i'm trying to get through persona right now as you all know mm-hmm. and yeah that's the way it goes baby uh parker griffith says it's always a great week knowing we get to hear you guys if you were to send each other to, to do Naked and Afraid and in a video game world, where would you send them? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, naked and Afraid in a video game world. Hmm. Naked well, and Afraid I, in a video game world. I wouldn't want I wouldn't want Rand to get hurt. But if we it, but let's say for example there's a full there's a full production team there, you're not actually going to get hurt. If like there's a crocodile or something, there's probably a guy with a gun around the corner ready to save you or extract you. Like no one no one actually really gets hurt in that show. So what would make a great TV show? I would put Rand in hmm I would put Rand in the world of I put Rand in World of Warcraft. No, actually, tell a lie. I put Rand in Pokemon World. Oh, see, I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't gonna put you in Pokemon. Like, so I want Jez to be happy. I don't want him to. So I put him in the Genshin Impact world with all the waifus around. <laughs> oh wow, that's brilliant. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. That's very nice of you. Yeah. Right, well, I, I want Rand to be happy. Then I'll put Rand in Bobby's Horse Adventure. Oh, so. thank you. Thank you. You got, the, you got the the Barbies, man. The hot Barbies. Yeah. Lazar Wolf says, hey, guys. I'm sure you already talked about the canceled Overwatch 2 PvE. We didn't. My friends oh, yeah, I, we forgot. Yeah, we my friends and I now. seem to be the only ones not upset and still enjoying the game. Anyway, my question is for Jez. Who are your mains in Overwatch? I main May, Farah, and Bastion. I, um, I also main Bastion. So I often play Bastion when I want to play DPS. And I just 
don't want to when i actually want to win i usually pick bastion when i'm having fun sometimes i'll pick junkrat or um oh what's her name now echo i really like playing echo especially i actually got an elite controller just for playing echo so i could control the i can control um her altitude without letting go of the aiming and stuff because you have to hold a to fly but then you can't aim because you've got you you've got your finger on the the a button instead of on the joystick so you kind of need an elite controller to play echo on on a console um but i also play i play all the healers um when i want a fast queue i really like the new healer i can't remember his name off the top of my head my memory's so bad um oh god what's his name the new healer they added i really like playing him but my main healer is probably moira like again if i want to win i pick moira because I, I know that I can smash people's faces as DPS Moira, which makes everyone mad, but I love it. But yeah, I love Overwatch. And I, that the comment you made really resonates with me about um, everyone's mad about the PvE. A lot of the people who are mad about the PvE never even played Overwatch, so kind of don't care what their opinion is on it. Um, and yeah. from what, I've, what I'm hearing, it hasn't affected monthly active users anyway, so... Well, it is. It know. is also like the reason for Overwatch Two, right? Because it was yeah, supposed to have that stuff, and now it's canceled, and it's kind of like, oh, so there was no reason to do an Overwatch Two. You could have just done updates and everything, right? Yeah, it's dumb. It's dumb as hell. It's dumb as hell that they did this, and it just smells of Activision. It's it's Destiny Two all over again. Destiny Two shouldn't exist either. You know, um, what is the point of Destiny Two? It was literally exactly the same as Destiny One. They didn't do. They didn't do change anything. It was even full of the same locations and stuff like that. So um, that's Activision all over, you know, but uh, from what I've heard, it's probably a good thing it was cancelled, put it that way. Mm, yeah. I don't really have much to say about it other than, like, laughing, like, uh, you know, another live service thing that's kind of <laughs> like, oh, we were going to do this, and it was the basis of doing Overwatch 2, but now we're not, uh, which is just funny. I, I couldn't, I don't care about Overwatch. So it's just, yeah. Um. I'm going to skip this one for now and we'll come back to it because it's so long. Uh, All right. Ralph Wiggum says, Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Rand, sorry about, for the hard question last time. I'll go easier. This is for both Rand and Jazz. Do you dip your fries in sauce, pour the sauce over the fries, or pour sauce, pour the sauce and fries in a bag and shake them to eat? I never even heard of the last one. What? <laughs> pour the sauce and fries in a bag and then shake them to And what? That's the thing people do? Uh,. I, I don't know. Maybe Ralph does it. Uh, maybe. Um, I'm going to shock you. I'm going to shock you right okay, now. Okay, what do you do? I actually don't have sauce with my fries. Well, normally I don't have sauce with my fries. I don't normally have sauce either. But if I do, if I do, I pour the sauce over the fries. So I pour the ketchup mm. over the fries. And, and that's kind of always what I did when I was a kid. I, 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 don't, I don't dip it. It's, it's, I'm a I, dipper. Okay, you're a dipper. Okay, I spread it. Okay, fair enough. Mythic yeah. Marty. Hey, Ren, Jez, listening to the recent shows, I can hear Jez's, <coughs> op Jez's opinion on cloud gaming has shifted due to the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally. I also He's, heard... He, absolutely. Absolutely correct. Like, um, I think I was... I actually meant to bring this point up earlier, but forgot. But, yeah, my, my, um, my mood on cloud gaming has completely changed since I slapped since i slapped um windows on my steam deck because it can run all those games natively and it, it was it was actually like when i went on vacation recently i traveled back from vacation i think i told this story everyone on the train all the little kids they weren't playing on cloud they weren't even playing on their phones they're playing on nintendo switch because there's no signal on the train i was on a nine hour train journey from vacation and it was just like man like i've got x cloud but it's useless and then I started to realize that nine times out of ten, when I when I want to use XCloud, I can't use it because I need I need powerful home Wi-Fi. And yeah, when when my girlfriend takes over the TV, XCloud is great. And that's like the only time I get to use it. You know, when mm. I'm when I'm in my room with my Xbox, and it just so happens that someone's taken over the TV. That's not a compelling use use case to me anymore. I spe it was it was compelling before the Steam Deck existed. And before, uh, especially the Asus uh, Rog Ally existed, and they, th these are the first generation PC handhelds, really. 
I mean, yeah, I know GPD wins been plugging away at, and the Iron Neo, but they're like they're, the distribution on those isn't particularly great in the West. But um, you know, these are Gen One devices at the end of the day, and I think the opportunity is absolutely massive. I, and I really want Microsoft to adopt that instead of push so hard on the cloud because I don't think the cloud's going anywhere. I really don't. Right. So. He also says, I also heard the sentiment in RDX. I have to ask, though, was cloud gaming not about lowering that barrier of entry and getting de- getting on devices people already have? How many people are willing to shell out 600, 700 on these dedicated machines? Steam Deck has done great so far, but we don't know what the size of the market actually is. It'll be interesting to see if it quickly saturates with all these new competitors arriving. In the current economic oh. climate, it's also hard to see Steam Deck or any others hitting Switch's sell-through as its price was very well placed but that came at the cost of performance. Cloud is limited by latency, but portables are limited by cost to performance ratio. So I don't think we can write either off. Interesting to hear your takes, even though I know Rand is no interest in cloud or Steam Deck. Hope you both are doing well. I mean, he is right. I mean, that's what cloud was supposed to be. It was supposed to, hey, you don't need this $600 Steam Deck or this $700 ROG Ally to play these games, these console quality games, because it's extreme to the device you already own. The mm. problem I also always thought was like, it's not fun or intuitive to play those games on your mobile phone. Right. You want like, so yeah, you, you have these devices like the Kishis and the bone, like what what's the, the bone one? Is there a bone one or something? Or am I thinking of something Bo- completely bone. different? Um, backbone, backbone, my bad. Oh, the backbone, yeah. The backbone, backbone, right? Where it's like, yeah, but then it's like, okay, you got to carry that with you plus your phone, but the phone's where you like text and do all these other things where you were, I don't know. It, it, but yeah, you're right. I mean, he's right. That's what cloud was supposed to do. But now you, these, these handheld, and it's, it did seem like handheld gaming was, was gone. And it was like, oh, well, but now that handheld gaming seems to be making a big comeback, I don't know. Um, I'm still personally not interested in either. So, and I, I do think it's interesting because you aren't the only one's opinion on this who shifted, who was like big in the cloud gaming and thought whatever. But now that you have these bigger, you know, handhelds coming out, it's like, well, what's the point? Um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I always thought cloud would be niche. Sure. But I was really bullish on it because I was, I was, I, I like the idea of it, you know, and I kind of, I always thought like, you know, this, this and it was useful to me, you know, because I, I didn't, me and my girlfriend fight over the TV. Um, and, you know, sometimes I need to play a game for review or whatever. And it's like, yeah, well, I've, I already know the graphics are good. Now, now I can just check out the story on my phone or whatever. Oh, well, my tablet, which I use it for. But there's so many, so many things about cloud that frustrate the experience, whether it's, whether it's screen size, whether it's the text size on a phone, whether it's like finding a tablet that is the right size and shape for it. Like originally... I like um, what I did first. I bought my Steam Deck and I was using Steam OS and whatever. And then I followed Microsoft's guide to put xCloud on the Steam Deck. So I was like, well, okay, well, I can get my Xbox games like that, you know, without having to install full Windows. And then I was just like, well, why don't I just install full Windows? And yeah, it was, it's, it's not, you know, completely straightforward. It takes about like 30 minutes to, to do it. But once you've done it, you know, it's like, well, why was I ever using cloud in the first place? You know, and it's just sort of that eureka moment that this just doesn't need to exist. And yes, it's a four hundred dollar device. Now everyone can just go out and buy a four hundred dollar device. I'm like sort of in a privileged privileged position where I can sort of like I can just literally write that off for tax purposes because it is for work. I did write an editorial about it, and I've done multiple guides about it, so I can sort of put it on my tax return or whatever. But um. I also think about like if I was just, you know, if I was still working back in the in the in the high school that I used to work in, it's still kind of making me think like I probably would prefer to get a Steam Deck over something like the cloud because there's just so many barriers to entry there. I don't know. Yeah, we have a Tooper. Who says, uh, Ran and Jez, let's play Naked and Afraid. Oh, the second Naked and Afraid one. <laughs> Console edition. A game franchise can only survive if you reskin it with a comic or anime IP. Which game would you save and what would the combo IP be? My example would be taking the gameplay concept of Phantom Dust 
and using with the dark the Doctor Strange franchise? Hmm, that's an interesting question. Um, I would take, I would take Halo. I knew you were going to say Halo, <laughs> and I'd make it look like Genshin Impact. Ooh. We'd make an anime, yeah. We'd make an anime Halo. Uh-huh. We'd have a Cortana. In fact, this would be this would be the Halo reboot, right? Um, the Halo reboot would be anime Halo. It'd be a gacha game, and it would uh, Cortana would be an anime waifu. Mm. And it'd be amazing. It'd be absolutely amazing. It's interesting that you say Halo because my suggestion was going to be take Gears of War and uh, skin it like Genshin Impact. So you could have Gears waifus. Oh, man. Yeah. That's just just dumb. That makes no sense. (laughs) Okay. I mean, because Halo's already halfway there. Because the, the, the enemies are so cartoony looking. You know, you got nah, the they could grunts. Even be, you could be even bored. You could have gotchas. We'd have like, yeah, gears would totally work, bro. Nah, Ge- gears is too realistic, man. I mean, Halo is basically an anime already. In fact, there has been a Halo anime, if I'm right. If yeah. I'm well, thinking. there's about to be a gears anime as well. Nah, this is terrible. This is a terrible idea. <laughs> and instead of like the chainsaw, it like it it uses l- power of love and hearts and stuff. <laughs> So like it's a magical girl anime, yeah, like Sailor Moon, Great. something like that. I don't know. It'd be, it'd be that though. But thank you for that. Rand no, Randall no. Jez nineteen says hi, Randall Jez. Hope you're doing well. Me and my friends are always on Discord, hoping for new PlayStation games to come to out on PC. Now that the n- new show next week is upon us, do you know any of you know if Ghost of Shima will be announced for PC? I know it's not an Xbox question, so I hope it's okay. It's perfectly fine. You can ask whatever you want. You can ask PlayStation Nintendo questions as well yeah. if you want. Um I don't um, I don't know anything about Ghost of Tsushima, uh PC I or whatever. So. But I mean I would so imagine I they talked about they're gonna bring all their stuff to PC. So I would imagine before Ghost of Tsushima two comes out, Ghost of Tsushima one will be ported to PC at some point. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think Ghost of Tsushima is probably like high on their priority priority list to get to PC because you know that game has like really broad appeal I Ghost of Tsushima is one of the games that I'm like really like god I, this is one game that makes me feel like I need a PlayStation but hey if they bring it to PC then <laughs> saves, saves me some money man uh, Omen I ran in jazz when this generation is over how many years do you think will take most studios to make a game here's some helpful stats I ran to help you out the average time it took for Xbox or Bethesda Game to release using the last release as an estimate is currently sitting at 4.38 years. Bethesda Software has taken the longest at 8 years for Starfield. Playground Games is the most efficient with 2 year intervals. Well, not re- recently. It's kind of 3 years, but I get what you're saying. They used to be 2. Most Xbox games released since 2020 have taken 5 to 6 years. Only exception is Doom and Forza series. I mean, mm. yeah. I mean, 5 and 6 years seems for anywhere between 4 and 6 depending on the scope and how big it is, right? Uh, yeah. Games take a long time these days. Even even smaller games, even indie games, take a while. So yeah. I mean, look how long Silk Song's taken, right? You mean Slick Song? Slick Song, yeah. That's just Slick kind of the song. way it is. Uh, Christopher Marlowe says, "Do you guys know Javid Jaffe enough to get him on as a two plus one guest?" I don't know Javid Jaffe at all. Um, um, I actually might be doing a show with him. Um, he reached out to me a little while ago, and we talked about doing a show and talking about xbox i said i don't have time in the short term because we're doing we're doing three shows this month because we missed one last month so i didn't have my tuesdays free and then it's the xbox e free stuff so i'm going to be super busy doing that so um but yeah i i i spoke to him and he seems like a cool dude so we'll see what happens yeah we could probably get you know after you know if if jazz does a show with them we might we might have you no, know, Jaffe on. That'd be that'd be interesting. Uh, it's quite small, but smells like a big one. Hey, r- hello, Ran and Jez. What's your less favorite lesser known bands? Bands that are significant to you, but have a hard time turning even close friends onto. Also, Ran, you got to play Breath of the Wild. You own the system. You own the game too. Jedi Survivor is an excellent game, and I loved it. But you don't need nostalgia to enjoy the new Zelda games. Also, mad props for consummating with Zelda. Uh, reference to last week's question. Cheerio mates. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see about ever playing a Zelda game. Uh, as I want to play a Zelda game, I, I I I have Breath of the Wild. I own it. I just never got around to it. Yeah, I don't but know. I'm going to bring my Switch back with me when I come back from England this time. 
Um, I don't know what what smaller bands have a hard time turning even close friends onto. I I don't know. Well, that's, that's... well, one band that I really love that I think is really underrated. Although they they did enjoy some popularity in the early two thousands is um a band called the Young Knives. Mm. I bet I'd be surprised if anyone here knows them. They were big in the early 2000s. They're still putting out music. I think they're awesome. They're very weird, alternative British sort of... I don't I don't even know what the genre is. It's, it's almost like post-punk, kind of. I absolutely love them. But yeah, that's mine. I, I don't really have one. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, Rand doesn't listen to music. I mean, I do. I just... I, I wouldn't say any of them like, are small. I mean, Mudvayne, maybe? I um, oh god i used to love mode van man you know like kid. be like hey I, but i also like listen i like coldplay i like slipknot i like pink floyd and the who i mean like people have heard of them so it's tough to say like an undiscovered gem that nobody else really knows or whatever i don't I don't really have Dude, i think i think mode van fits that bill maybe mode van <laughs> does i mean they, but my friends like mode van too so like it's just oh whatever you know Do they, are they still going they i, I think I, they reunited uh yeah I, a... I absolutely i love their first album but i hate their second album so much i stopped listening to them let's <laughs> stop listening Jeez. to them completely oh i just thought of another band uh, i know a Brit- if you're into metal um there's two british bands that you should definitely check out uh one's called employed to serve a british metal band and the other's called sixth per- uh, spelled s-i-k-t-h they are both absolutely incredible if you love metal so definitely listen to those they're not that big, though. Alorhan Grogo says, Hey, gents, unfortunately, I won't be able to listen live, but I want to say thanks for putting on the, quote, most AAA banger podcast of all time. Joe Rogan's got nothing on the Xbox, too. You were talking about podcast self-proclaiming the other week. Feel free to use that one in the future. Both of you stay <laughs> strong during the not E3 season and know your work's appreciated. Can't wait for your takes over the next few weeks, months. Cheers. Thanks yes, so much. Welcome to the Xbox 2 podcast, the most triple a banger podcast of all time <laughs> be funny reviewed be- yeah. better better than joe rogan quote yeah. unquote. <laughs> from yeah uh blatoven now that we see more and more evidence potentially showing that the series s is holding back xbox's gen do you think they could find a workaround by allowing games to run in the series s through cloud similar to the switch runs games such as hitman plague's tale and control no well... i don't think no. Have they started doing that for the Xbox One yet? I don't know. Have they? Can you? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. It's tough. I don't have an Xbox One to check. I think they're sort of locked into that. To ser- so supporting Series S with digital games or physical, well, not physical, but digital, yeah. actual native versions for as long as the console supported, which could be another 10 years realistically I, I just don't see a scenario where it's like well now all the games on on, on the series s are cloud versions i don't think that's going to happen uh yeah mm. i don't think so i could i could i could easily see it like it like i can imagine a scenario let's say that does happen i can imagine a class action lawsuit of like mm. hey microsoft's you know said like these like and now all the games are cloud streaming but i don't really have reliable internet to do that sort of thing i could easily see some sort of cloud game like a class action lawsuit or at least a lawyer wanting to do that microsoft yeah, promised maybe. this and didn't deliver and change I, yeah, I could see it proven how many games announced at the 2020 showcase do you think could show up at the upcoming showcase fable stated k3 about everwild stalker 2 uh i mean two i think two of those two of those hmm what do you think uh what was the question again how Sorry, many game? How many of the games announced at the 2020 showcase do you think could show up at this showcase? Fable, State of Decay Ooh. 3, Avowed, Everwild, Stalker 2. And I said two of those. I'm going to say four. Four of them? Oh, man. That's almost all of them except one. Yeah. Okay. And we'll see. Who's, we'll that's, see. Bad. That's, not bad. that's not based on anything. That's not a leak. It's just a vague prediction. All right. Kraken56. Hey guys, I saw a take from Clover on Reset Era today. Usually I agree with most of his takes, but I couldn't disagree more on this one. He said, don't expect Fable because it would overcrowd the show with big RPGs. The optics are not good right now for Xbox big games. They need to change that, and it starts with showing off great games to excite people. 
Did anyone care in 2016 or any other Sony showcase when they showed off multiple third-person action adventure story games? Not everyone talks about how good they are. They were because of the content. Fable and Starfield may be more popular than Avowed, but if the game shows well and is good to do three big Western RPGs in one show, does it really matter? They can also have more developer directs as well if they want to shine a light on Avowed. Mm. Well, it, so his take was basically don't expect Fable because it would overshadow Avowed. I mean, it's it kind of reads like that, which is interesting because you would ass- are you assuming you're getting a gameplay reveal for Fable? I would I would doubt that very much if Fable was there. Um, mm-hmm. you know, so I I don't I I disagree with with Clover as well. If you got the games and the games and they want to show the games and they're ready to show the games in a good light, show what you can. If you Starfield is you know going to be after the show in its own thing, um. Do you not show Avowed because, well, it would be overshadowed by Starfield? Avowed's not coming out till next year. How could it be overshadowed by Starfield? Starfield's going to be out in September, right? I don't know. I, I'm just of, of the idea if you got something good to show, show it, even if it's some, if even if even it's a, a very similar sort of thing. So if Yeah, you, I if, think um, Xbox feels the same way for what it's worth. Yes. So there you go. I disagree. With, I agree. I, I usually agree with Clover on all that stuff. I love him. Talk to him quite a bit, but I disagree on this one. If it's ready to be shown and they want to show it, I don't think it it overshadows anything at all. Yeah, I mean, just think how many RPGs they've actually got in development. They can't. They, at some point, they've got to accept there's got to be some overlap. Yeah, I right. I mean, maybe you don't show Project Cobalt because it's too too early or whatever. But it's like if if Playground Games wants to show Fable, and Obsidian wants to show Avowed, then you show them. Simple as that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Lee Sanders says, Afternoon, gen- gentlemen. Love the ultimate show at the Showcase Fantasy Draft. Anyone that hasn't dived into it, Patreon, I really recommend it. Was Zelda out That's last week fun. and feeling somewhat left out with everyone play while I turns to my 500-game backlog? I thought I would steer the question towards the chat of the deep backlog of games. Being an early achievement hunter and now more of a casual gamer while chasing them have just surpassed 300,000 gamer score. I've fallen massively behind on a lot of games. Famously games like Mass Effect, Assassin's Creed, Gears. I have fallen just fallen way behind in such and which pains me when I see the latest game arrive and I want to play it. But out of all the games that you want to get back to and play, which game is always recommended to you that you want to play but have never played? On a, and on a second note, I am more like Jez when it comes to gaming, jumping from game to game. Currently I'm juggling Forza Horizon 5, Hi Fi Rush, Star Wars, Jedi Fallen Order. And Psychonauts, but you and are one and move on. How do you manage it? Any tips? Because I would love to be able to do that, but I think I, I have this deep down worrying feeling of it's if of if it's finished, I would be sad it's over. But then that explains the above. Cheers again for the great show. CMA sucks massive donkey balls, Lee Sanders. <laughs> um, yeah. Thanks, Lee. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, mm, 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 mm. So Rand, go. You, you, so, gotta, you gotta answer his question. Um, how, the, all the games that we want to go back and play which game is always recommended to you that you want to play but have never played the one game that is probably on my uh, list to play there's two and I'm planning on going back to them at some point is Gardens of the Galaxy which I mentioned a few times and Cyberpunk 2077 yeah I forgot you I keep forgetting yeah. you haven't played that those would be the two um, that I that I have uh, that, are, that are at the top of the list and it's more like okay are there any, there are no more new games coming out. There's some time where it's like, I can develop, I can devote 50 hours to cyberpunk, but then there's also books. And it's like, I sometimes when I, I'm really into Jedi right now, so I'm not reading that much. Um, but that, mm. that usually happens. Cause I usually kind of like go all in on one of these things. So for me to be both of those, and I don't know any tips about playing one game at a time. I don't know. I just, it's kind of what I've always done. I play something until I'm finished. And I move on. Maybe it has to do with the fact that, like, I think maybe it had to do with the fact that I was always trying to maximize my GameFly, right? Because you get a game game from GameFly, and What's it, GameFly GameFly is a game rental service where they eat, where they mail you a game to your house, right? Right. So I always was trying to maximize how many games I could get out from GameFly versus how much I'm paying for it. Right, so if I get four games from GameFly, but I'm going in between all four, it'll take longer and longer before I finish one to send it back to get a different game. Mm. So 
I always kind of focused on, okay, well, I just mailed this game back and you know, it's going to take two days for to get there. And then if they send one right away, it'll take another two days to get to get to me. So in the meantime, I'm going to finish this other game I have from Gamefly and then, okay, I'm finished with this. So it was, I think maybe it comes from that of trying to maximize my return where I'd be like, I finished this one game, boom, it's out the door and it's mailed to Gamefly and it's on the next one. And then while that game's coming back, going back and forth from Gamefly to me, I'm already on the, the other game I have. And I'm, boom, I'm done. I send that, right? So it was constant flowing of games in and out mm. because of the way I, I would finish something. Where if I just was playing a whole bunch at once, it could take months before you would finish with it and you're just wasting money on the service. Right? Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, um, yeah. So Achievement. If Xbox had more invested in the early Xbox One days, was third party oh, games? Wait, wait, wait. What, what, what? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say what game. Okay. I need. To okay. Play. Which one? I'm sorry. Probably Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Not. You need to get to but Star I, Wars. I haven't, I haven't got around to them. Yeah. yeah. Achievement says it. Talking about it. If Xbox had more investment in the early Xbox One days, which third party games do you think they would have made exclusive that gen? Probably would have at least ponied up to keep the Call of Duty marketing rights, right? Probably, yes. 100% yeah, probably yes. Uh, maybe they would have spent more to try to get FIFA rights. You know, like like the, like the maybe NBA rights, like the, the, the games that the casual sort of play. The Maddens, the FIFAs, the 2Ks, uh, Grand Theft Auto, stuff like that. They, I think they had that during the 360 days too. Uh, and I think PlayStation is going to have it for this one. Maybe. So it'd be it'd be those bigger games, right? Um, Governor Grimm, just a quick question this time: Why do journalists suddenly think Starfield is going to bomb? Between Destin and Ryan, there are suddenly very strange takes on Starfield. Do you think Starfield being thirty FPS is equivalent to it bombing? No, but uh, people might look at the Series X in a weird way of like, oh, most powerful console can't run Starfield at sixty or whatever. Mm. And I think we, when we talked about the Starfield under pressure, both me and Jez agree that Starfield's important, but I sort of feel like the articles and the takes are reaching ridiculous kind of levels of importance where it's like, mm. it's their last chance of redemption, right? Uh, leading people to say Xbox is basically dead if Starfield doesn't deliver. Um, I mean, it'll be bad if Starfield doesn't deliver. Don't get me wrong. But like, I don't, I don't like the brand won't die. You know, I don't know. Like it's, 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 it's a weird, maybe it's just the way the article was positioned as like, uh, as like, it's the last hope. Cause people have been saying that about Xbox for, for, for an, almost all last gen to now. I mean, Halo Infinite was supposed to be like the last chance for Xbox. If you remember yeah, I do. I mean, that. It, and that's sort of the thing I think is like it'll keep getting the the goalposts will keep getting sh- put pushed further and further back. It wasn't Halo Infinite. It it's Starfield. Oh, it's not Starfield. It's Fable or something, right? Mm. I don't know. I I just sort of feel like it's not fair to Starfield to put that insane amount of pressure on it where you're already setting the narrative well in advance of everything. Like, oh, it needs to deliver or else. Like, nobody says that about any of PlayStation or or uh, PlayStation or Nintendo games. But, yeah. like, and I understand Xbox is, yeah, it's, it's had a bad 18 months. They didn't deliver, right? And they didn't have any launch games. Like, that's not to say people shouldn't, you know, be like concerned about certain stuff. Like after Redfall, I'm like, yo, what the hell is going on? This can't ever happen again. It shouldn't have happened in the first place. But also it's like the idea that if Starfield comes out and it's not good, well, that's just further proof that Xbox has ruined Bethesda, that Phil and company can't run the business, that people will leave Xbox when in like the numbers right now paint an opposite picture. Well, sure. The hardware's low, but their monthly active users are more than PlayStation and the money they're making is more than ever before. And I would imagine the next upcoming two fiscal quarters will be higher than the previous ones. So does the actual facts based, does the actual facts facts based on like 
the brand will die. Does that align with what reality? Or is it just like a huge Twitter echo chamber that has no basis in what's actually happening? Like, you know, does does Starfield matter? Or does God of War matter to all the people playing Hon- Honkai Star Rail, whatever the game is, that had 20 million downloads in a day or whatever? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I just, I don't know. I I just agree that Starfield's important, but I just kind of laugh at the idea that it's the last chance at redemption. I don't know. I, I just find that kind of absurd. Yeah. I think like if Starfield isn't like, say, say it's like a little low eighties, like for whatever reason, you know, are, are these people who said that Xbox is dead? Are they going to be like, Oh yeah, Xbox is dead now because Starfield scored in that low eighties or something. Uh, I I doubt it very very highly. <laughs> you know? So, Forza hit thirty million monthly active users. Microsoft owns Minecraft for God's sake. You know it's it's absurd to say that any single game can you know lead to the end. You know I don't know, but you know people people got to get clicks, man. Yeah, and uh, you know narratives and all that stuff, right? Like it's just. It's like, oh, the narrative will be this. It's well, it's, it'll only be this because you're setting the narrative. Your IGN, your Forbes, like people pay attention to what you say. So like you're, whether you you know it consciously or whatever, you're setting up the narrative. You know, uh, so we'll see. Starfield, we'll, you know, we'll see. We'll see what it does. Um. Yeah. CyberRes says, first time asking a Patreon question. Just wanted to say that y'all host the best podcast around, and even my wife, who doesn't care about games, knows Rand and Jez and listens into the podcast every now and then. Keep up the good work. Wow. That's awesome. awesome. That's 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 kind of crazy. And then we got this big one from Man. He says, hey, guys, I was listening to Jeff Gertzman's podcast, episode 49, around the hour and 19 mark. He was talking about Xbox and how it manages and handles the day-to-day. I have some quotes from him that gave – some insight on how Xbox policies get in the way for developing and trying to do anything on Xbox. I wanted to see if you guys have any inputs on it. Sorry if it's a little long. I I actually listened to this podcast, so I'll just pick some, choose some things here. Yeah. Jeff said, my read on Phil Spencer is that he's very genuine, does care about the stuff he cares. He cares. He does. He does care. He says he, he does care about the stuff he cares about, or he says he cares about. That is necessarily, that is not necessarily a, a front Obviously, he's also running a business and, you know, like doing all that too. So, you know, you kind of have to factor that in there. The thing I've heard over the years, and this is kind of older stuff at this point, but it's not to say that it's still not there, but it's kind of put some of this in perspective. The thing you hear about a lot, and this is something before Phil Spencer was in the job, before he was in uh, this position and after you still hear about it, is that Microsoft people are Microsoft people. Something that you, uh, oh, I lost my, my place. Um Something that you always heard about the way Microsoft is ran is that they would make a decision and go with it. And you could go to them and say, hey, this policy you have is screwing me over. And they would be like, well, that's the policy. The policy is there for a reason. Obey the policy. And sometimes those policies impact developers. The thing I've always heard about Phil Spencer and the way that Microsoft, the Xbox business is run and Microsoft is that there's a shell around him or there's a shell around even just the leadership team to a certain extent. With people who are used to being, yeah, the policy is the policy, I'm not going to be one that takes it up the chain. And so if you can get through that and get to Phil and say, hey, man, this is bad for me, a third-party external developer, this thing that's making our job harder, can we get an exception here? That 10 times out of 10, he does the right thing. That he's like, oh, this is crazy. We need to not do this. We need to rethink this. I don't know how much of that is still there because obviously he's been in the chair for a good long time now. But when he was first coming into the role, there was a lot of BS policies around Xbox of like this is the way they do things because they built all these policies when they were on top with the 360 and then they didn't get away fast, didn't get away from them fast enough when the Xbox One came out and tanked. But generally speaking, they all want to do what's right, not only for the players, but for the industry and developers, which has led to this constant chirping, constant chipping away at those policies. And those other things, but in order to get the ball rolling, you have to crack that shell and get in there and be like, look, this is crappy. 
And then finally, there'll be someone like, wait, how come you didn't tell me that this policy was still like this? We can't do that. We have to make it right. And it's probably disrupted to some of the other things that they are trying to get done because they're dropping everything to fix some brain dead policy. So he says, so do you guys agree with Jeff's doing at, with Jeff that doing anything in Xbox is difficult because they have to keep chipping away at these policies and it's hard to get in contact with Phil because of them and the shell around Phil and the leadership team. Thanks for the great content you guys put out every week. Um, and put simply, yeah, everything he said is completely in line with what I've heard. And, um, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the, there's no other way of saying it. Everything that Jeff Gersma said is, is completely in line with what I've heard. Um, you know, I've been, I've been covering Microsoft for, man, almost a decade now, like eight years, seven years, eight years. I think I'm in eight years now at this point. And the kind of scans heavily, you know, I know when I remember we used to talk about how, um, one of the issues that Microsoft had was that, um, Xbox was under the windows division, you know, mm -hmm. which led to a lot of, a lot of these policy issues, you know, especially around funding and around money, which is why like. You had, um, uh, oh man, I can't remember his name now. Ah, oh, my memory's so bad. That dude on Twitter, the analyst from Nico Partners. Why do yeah. I remember his job, but I can't um, remember his name? Uh, is he huge? Yeah, that chap. Yeah. So he, um, he famously said Xbox has got no yeah. funding left. Um, like that turned out to be wrong, but to be fair to him. At the time it was right. Know, at the time, it was correct, and that was partially because of the the way Xbox was under Windows. So one of the first things Phil did was being fully aware of what Microsoft is like. It was like, okay, I've got to get Xbox sort of shifted to be its own thing, to be its own division, and not be part of Windows. So that was part of that chipping away at that policy. And I think, like over time, like this this the stuff that Phil's still discovering even now that needs to be fixed and needs to be repaired. And I, the one thing I would disagree with is it's not necessarily a shell. I think it's more the fact that it's very complicated. Being at Microsoft, very complicated, and it's not so much a shell as it is. There's just not enough man hours in the day to to tackle all the stuff that needs to be fixed. So like they're kind of like it's kind of like triage. They're kind of fixing things as they come up and as they're a problem and as they they can be amended. And I think Redfall is a big watershed moment, honestly, for like the, the, I already know that they've implemented changes about how they sort of do some of this stuff because of Redfall. And I also like last year with the, the Xbox event being the 12 months thing. Um, and then not panning out to 12 months. I think like some responsibilities have shifted for like setting messages for marketing events because of that as well. So like some of the, some of the policies and the disconnect between, um, some of the stuff that, you know, over time is gradually getting fixed. And I don't think it's because of a shell. I think it's just because they're just very busy, you know, and there's just so much to do and there's so much that needs to be done. And um, I've already said Microsoft's like this slow lumbering behemoth and it takes ages to turn them around because they're such a big, complicated 40 year old business with like crazy amounts of, you know, polit office politics and, you know, like you go to Microsoft HQ, man, it's like a city. It's got its own Starbucks and it's, its own shopping center and stuff like that. It's huge. You, you don't, you don't get how big this company is until you physically go there. And it's like, oh my God, you know, I can't believe, you know, they call it Microsoft campus, but they really should call it Microsoft city. It's, it's massive, you know? So yeah, I think that's where some of that stuff lies. And yeah, I think they're, they're gradually chipping no. away at it. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff's right. I mean, I don't know if it's like that anymore, but yeah, Phil was under, you know, I mean, even, even, even look at just a quick example, the Xbox app on PC, there's like, Xbox doesn't fully own that. It's also the Windows team, right? So there's a lot and they've, of, they've gradually chipped away at that. Yeah, they're gradually chipped away at that. And, and, and it'd and be something. You're going to hear more about that at Build, I think. Yeah, so if it was, gradually chipped away. if it was always in the possession of Xbox, it would probably look different, but it's like two teams with whatever and it's like that's three teams part, that's part know, of the but... it's part of the stuff that you know jeff's talking about here yeah. um we have jacks what do you guys think of the battle pass and overwatch personally it needs to scale down a bit some of the challenges you have to win 50 matches come on uh, i don't even 
I don't know anything about the battle pass. Yeah, That's all jazz. I think like the battle pass is a bit aggressive. I think like even I struggle with it. Like, you know, um as someone who plays quite a lot of Overwatch, it, as someone who owns the premium tier, so I get twenty percent extra. I think the battle pass could be a little bit more friendly, especially given the fact that those skins disappear forever once, yeah. or m maybe they'll end up in the shop later. I really like the multiversus battle pass. Like the well, I know multiversus is basically dead now, but the first battle pass was like, I got I got through that pretty quickly, and you know, I was like, oh, that's really nice. But the problem there is like once I finished the battle pass, I pretty much quit the game and never went back to it. So. Maybe it's like maybe it's the way it is for a reason. Keep you playing. I don't know. Yeah, achievement says so is uh, Arcane Austin the D team. Well, right now probably yeah they're at the very bottom, right? Yeah. Uh, Forte member for thirty one months. I've been blessed by having the ability to listen to Rand and Jazz while playing future Game of the Year Tears of the Kingdom. Great show, homies. Xbox ain't done. Hold the line, Forte. Although get rid of that. Hold Zelda. the line. Yeah. Mav, Captain fun speculation. Fury, so showcase new game announcements. Xbox or PlayStation? Who has more? And will Xbox have a big game at the Keeley show? I mean, I, I mean, Xbox all, already has a lot of known games, Mav. So just off the basis of that, I would say PlayStation has more new game announcements because they're just only only people only games they know from PlayStation are from first party is Spider Man Two and Wolverine. We still know a whole bunch of Xbox games. So just based off that, I'll say PlayStation has more new game announcements. But, but I don't know. I don't I don't know anything. That's just a pure guess. Mm. And will they have a big game at the Keeleys? Uh what, like at Summer Games Fest? Mm, I can't imagine X maybe something small. Maybe something no, no, really no, small. They do have a presence idea Xbox at the um the Keeleys. Well there you go. So, so. No, nah, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to have a big game at the Keeleys when you have your own show literally a couple days later. Uh, yeah. Bigotty says, has China approved the deal? Indeed, they have. Uh, Daniel, even if Starfield isn't a 10, it still has mods, and long after we stop playing all these games this year, we'll still be playing Starfield. For some people, definitely will be, yeah. I will. Yeah. It's, got, it's a game I that lives I just on want to for a long time. Shit, man. Yeah, but you know what? I think, I think that comes to the end of the show. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed before, it. Before before we end the show, I just want to... Uh, fun speculation. Mav on, on Twitter, he just posted a leaked Xbox showcase, bro. What? The one that we already read or a different one? No, no, no. A new one. Okay. You ready for this? You ready All for right. this? I'll, right. just, I'll just run through for some of the games. GTA 6 is exclusive to Xbox. <laughs> Thundercats, versus... Thundercats, Ninja Turtles, Red Dead. Yeah, okay. I mean, he, he just typed it up in no, no, Word. No. It's funny. Hello Kitty, MMO, no. exclusive to Xbox. I mean, Xbox Podcast Simulator. Ooh, I like that exclusive one. To Xbox. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> but um, yeah, let's get out of here, bro. Yeah. Thank you guys for being here. We love you all. Hope you had a great time. If you did, hit that like button. Subscribe to the show. We'll be back next Friday with another episode of the Xbox 2. And maybe it'll be our prediction show because who knows what we'll be doing that week before. But, uh, yeah, hope you guys have a great weekend. Keep it gaming. Love you all. Later. Hugs. Later.